I will call to order. While we're, I'll call to order the uh, September 7th uh, select board selectman meeting. And we'll do a uh, roll call vote, uh, roll call attendance. Uh, we'll start with uh, Sean. John Farrell here. Uh, Darcy. Darcy Dale here. Is Rosie on yet? Yes. She is. I see her name. Rosie. Uh, William Olson is here. Oh, there's Jamie. And Jamie Knutson here. And Rosie. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, good. All right, so I'm in the car. I'll be I'll be in front of my computer in a few minutes, but uh, James gonna help me run things if we need to while I'm in my car headed home because it's a Tuesday rather than a Monday. But hi everyone, sorry. Hi, Rosie Kennedy here. <clears throat> Thank you, Rosie. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. And I don't know if Joe, you're gonna pull up a flag, but we will start when you're ready for us, Joe. There we go. All right. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic to the, uh, for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation, nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. <clears throat> All right, so now we'll do uh, reports, select my report. So we'll start with uh, Sean. Sean, anything to update over the last couple of weeks? I thought um, we did announcements. No, oh, do you want to do announcements? Sorry, yes, we'll do announcements first. Yes, that's fine, thank you. So, uh, uh, James, you could go through the announcements? Sure, yeah, uh, so the board and committee openings are, uh, there's two associate openings for the Finance Advisory Committee. Uh, one for the Conservation Commission, uh, one for the Hamilton Historic District Commission, two openings for the Open Space Committee, and then uh, one opening as an associate member of the Hamilton Planning Board associate member. So those of you out there, um, we encourage more participation. And uh, if you've got concern for the community and maybe some skills in those areas, please apply. Thanks, Jamie. I think, I think we're actually uh, going to be working on a CBA position later tonight. So it's great to keep these positions filled. <clears throat> uh, Jamie, I want to keep going through the, uh, through the agenda so I don't miss anything. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so uh, now is the section of our meeting where we have three minutes for public comment on if they're not covered by the other agenda items. Yes, um, Peter Britton, 466 Highland Street. Uh, I'm assuming that you all are in reception of the email I sent out that uh, was a request. Dear Board of Selectmen and Town Manager, I bring forward these materials once again and hope that you will embrace this warrant article and propose it at the upcoming special town meeting as a BOS proposed warrant article. All parties are clearly interested in resolving the property tax issues involving 550 Highland Street. Respectfully requested and submitted, Peter P. Britton. And the warrant article, uh, I might as well make this public for everybody. This is the warrant article that we wrote for the annual town meeting and missed by a couple of hours, um, it being uh, accepted by the town clerk. And it reads as follows. Sponsor, Peter Britton. <laughs> Proposed title, refund amount paid for tax exempt structure at 550 Highland Street. Proposed warrant article, to raise and appropriate or pay from available funds the remaining unreturned amount the town charged for property taxes and collected from Kevin M. Kaminsky and Maureen Clark, which actually has an E on the end of it for your writing, for invalid property taxes on the Bradley Palmer State Park structure they have been renovating under a historic curatorship program lease from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and to take any other action in connection therewith. 
the amount $13,256.07. And this warrant article, uh, I'm pleased, was helpfully composed by Bruce Ramsey, a former town man moderator of good standing and excellent legal uh, background in town of Hamilton. Uh, I had thought of maybe going through the property tax form from the assessor's office, but uh, um, in the hopes that uh, you all might consider accepting this as your own uh, warrant article, I will uh, just uh, not go into that. Yeah, so, so Peter, I, I communicate with you earlier today, but yes, we are going to have an agenda item later tonight on the Warner article. We're going to rec I, I'm going to recommend that we uh, create a article that proposes to repay the Kaminsky's over the next three years the full amount of the thirteen thousand four hundred dollars. So, um, so if you want to stand by, yes, I um, we're going to take this on as an agenda item tonight, and hopefully, we'll put an article out there that will allow the citizens of Hamilton to vote at the uh, next town meeting to uh, repay them for the taxes. That's the special town meeting coming up in October, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Thank you. All right. Any other members of the public wish to be heard? All right. Uh, then let's move. We can move along to the uh, select board members and town manager reports. Uh, well, you want you want to you want me to continue on there? <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. All right, All right sure. Um, yeah. So, any uh, do we have any reports from select board? This I'll, I'll give a quick one since Bill asked me to go first. It'll be pretty brief, and it just kind of speaks to what Peter was just talking about. Um, Kevin and. Uh, Maureen. Maureen, thank you, uh, had put a petition into the CPC uh, to pay for that uh, money for some restoration to the 550 Highland, uh, the Dodge House through CPC, and the CPC voted on it on, uh, when was it, Thursday last week, uh, and they deemed it ineligible just because there was kind of too many things going on. They had talked to the state uh, and some council and also the HHDC, the Hamilton Historic District Commission, um, and several other people. And they just didn't think that it quite fit with the CPC. Uh, so, and thus, that's why Peter is back and, and talking about the citizens petition. And then we'll be talking about it later tonight, uh, what we propose for the warrant. So that's kind of it, the CPC meeting in brief. That was kind of the bulk of the meeting. That's all I have. All right, thanks, Sean. All right, and uh, Darcy or Rose? Yes, I, I do have something. Um, let's see. Um, I, you know, I don't even know if this was something, if it was two weeks ago or two and a half weeks ago, but uh, Joe, do you remember when we were at the Patton Estate and there was a, an open house and um, a ribbon cutting and Seth Moulton was there? Joe? Yes, yes, okay. I do. Uh, it was it was uh, early mid April. Okay. Um, Seth Moulton was up around just before the fifteenth of April, I think. So, I mean August, yeah. August, not April. August. August. Okay. August. So I I can't remember if it was reported, but there was all of that going on. Um, it was quite a big uh, to do, and I guess it was for Incubate, which is um, leasing office space um, in a very um, um, informal way. So that was pretty interesting. Um, to meet Seth Moulton and and um, see that see everything that's going on there at the Patent Estate. Um, the other thing is is that uh, earlier today, a group of uh, town leaders from Hamilton met with the executive director of the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board, and we learned that um, you know lots of things that we have to tie up. Uh, that we actually have a variance out there that was approved by the state, which would allow for the um, uh, ADA compliance elevator and ramp. And I just want to keep everything out in the arena so people will understand this is something that we're going to have to deal with. There may be some more money coming from the office of, um, um, oh boy, 
what is it? MOB, Ma Massachusetts Office of Disability. And apparently there are some, there's elevator money there, literally elevator money just for elevators. So we're going to see if we can, um, you know, work with our um, Brad. Well, Brad was involved in this, but he won't be there at the time. But Bruce Tarr, um, we'll be working with him and um, the executive director. So we've got some, we've got some discussions to do on that part, but that's an update on that. Um, I've also arranged for the BOS retreat um, that's on September 25th. I have one more pre-meeting with the group Diversity at Workplace for our unconscious bias um, workshop and team building exercises. And again, this is going to be a, a retreat on the 25th for the um, select board. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you. Darcy, well, thank could you, you just thank, review thank the you, hours of, of the retreat? Could you review the hours oh, of the oh, retreat? Oh, yes. Um, uh, you know, I don't have them in front of me. Ugh. I'll send it out in an email. So. We're starting at 10 a.m. and uh, probably be two. finished up around 2, 2.30. That's right. I remember. <laughs> Right. And, and, th and thank you. And thank you, Darcy. These are two very important things you're working on. So I was supposed to be on the call today and had brand new conflict. So I will catch up with you on that call with the okay. uh, MOD. But um, but thank you for uh, taking the charge on these two items because they're very important to the town. And uh, I appreciate your involvement in those items. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, Rosie, anything else or Jamie, anything else to update? Yep. I, I have some things. Um, so these are all um, local issues, and I just wanted to um, tell everybody that I met with Cooper Blatz and his mom, Kim, last week regarding some volunteer um, work that Cooper wants to do at the Senior Center um, in effort to earn his Eagle Scout um, award, and he's going to be making some uh, raised beds, which sound really, really nice. And he's also um, wanting to do a mural on the backside of the um, senior center. So um, we were talking about this, and one of my suggestions was maybe get some ideas from the seniors themselves. What what would they like to see there? So that might be an, an interesting um uh, turn of events, and we'll see what comes of that. But Cooper is a very enthusiastic, as is his mom, Kim, and um, I really enjoyed meeting them. And so the next thing is um, Kristen Crockett, who is the six hour person for the Council on Aging. I uh, met her uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago, and then attended um, a board meeting with Kristen in attendance last Wednesday. And I just want to thank Kristen for bringing all her expertise, her dedication, her, her care of the seniors. Um, a lot of the things that um, she wants to work on include programs, communication, and um, putting out needs assessment, um, a needs assessment for seniors. Um, I watched the interaction between uh, Kristen and the board, and I was very impressed. Um, there are lots of good things coming in the work. So if you're 60 or over, you get to benefit from all that great work. And then there was something, just one other issue. Um, the, the downtown area, and this is just more of a more of a thoughtful piece of information. I think a lot of us have been racking our brains to try to understand why that right railroad app isn't as um, well uh, attended, say, as the um, the um, Hamilton Crossing over where the Crosby's is now. Granted, a lot of those stores are empty now, and I don't know what's going to come of that. But, but um, Jack and um, Robin Davis did this great little video, which I know we don't have time for today, but they really pointed out a lot of the mm, visual deficits in the downtown. And I think we all know that the, um, the details of the, the details of doing a project really make the difference. And Robin pointed out to me that there were just weeds everywhere downtown. It was very unattractive. Um, it reeks of, of negligence. And so one of the questions was, who's responsible for that? Well, let me tell you something. Robin and Jack went down there and weeded all around the post office, made it look so much more attractive. And they also cut um, some of the suckers and the weeds from the um, trees that are 
wind along um, um, Railroad Ave. Um, and one other thing they brought to my attention, which I actually did notice tonight, is that the, the trash cans are overflowing in this trash um, all over the ground on Railroad Ave. And um, from it's my understanding that DPW is not responsible for emptying those trash cans, but Casella is. And so I'm wondering um, if maybe Joe could look into that and make sure that those trash cans um, get emptied on a regular basis and also the um, trash on the ground gets picked up. Um, as you all know, those um, benches that we paid an enormous amount of money for directly abut those trash cans and it brings um, bees and it brings flies and it smells very um, un unappealing. So I would like to see us, um, the town, maybe make a joint effort to making sure that the downtown looks more attractive and inviting to the small business owners that um, we are trying to attract. And that's all I had to say tonight. Uh, thanks, Rosie. I think it's important. I think it's a uh, we'll do a plug now for the uh, September 19th is a uh, fall mm -hmm. festival on railroad that will be uh, uh, well, well um, represented and a lot of activities. So uh, please come down on September, Sunday, September 19th. Rosie, can uh, you open your tea, your garden party? Oh, sure. So, so there's a, a senior a citizen garden party happening this Saturday at the Patton Homestead from two until five. And um, we have a, a pretty decent response so far, um, but we certainly have room for probably 10 or 15 more people. Um, we have lots of sponsorships and um, Honeycomb is donating a bunch of their wonderful desserts. So I think that alone would be worth coming for. And also the Institution for Savings has made a very generous um, um, sponsorship amount uh, um, for for that activity. And also um, Crosby's will be donating some gift cards. So it's very exciting. We have a nice um, volunteer group and I'm hoping that more people will want to come and just see what the town has to offer for um, senior citizens, um, younger senior citizens. It's, it's not just people who perhaps have difficulty getting around. We're a, we're a big town, um, a quarter to a third of our citizens are over the age of 60. So please come down and enjoy the fun. We welcome you. We'll have some entertainers from the Marblehead Little Theater Group and um, I think it'll be fun. So come on down. Thanks, Rosie. Uh, Jamie, anything to add? If not, can you go to the next agenda item? Yeah, I actually don't have anything to report. Uh, and so, yeah, so we, we can move on to our consent agenda. Uh, and there's a, so it could five items on there that we have all received uh, information about. Uh, so the buyback of two cemetery lots, the, Purple Heart uh, 10K and Fun Run, the Ed Fund Christmas Tree Sale uh, requests, the, and then two things related to the fire department. Uh, anyway, the trust distributions um, is one item, and then the accepting some gifts for the Hamilton Fire Department in memory of uh, Zeke Maidmont. So I have, a, uh, I have a motion. Do I have a motion yeah. to approve the consent agenda? Moved. So moved. Second. Uh, second. Second from Rosie. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Sean. Uh, Sean Farrell. Aye. Uh, Jamie. Jamie Knudsen. Aye. Rosie. Rosie Kennedy. Aye. Uh, Darcy, Darcy Dale. Darcy Dale. Aye. And William Olson. Aye. All right. And uh, our next agenda item is uh, the consideration of the appointment of Andrea Phillip to the Zoning Board of Appeals as an associate. So uh, Joe, if you could walk us through that uh, application process. Certainly, uh, Mr. Bowler is online today as well. He's the chair of the ZBA. He sent a letter endorsing uh, Andy's uh, application. Andy visited with uh, ZBA at their last meeting. She is also on, um, on here today in case the board wants to ask her any questions as you usually do. And um, the, was 
she's got a, a good resume and, and uh, very interested in helping us here in the town. And we're eager to have you know, folks like her jumping into, into the pool with us. Mm-hmm. So Bill Bowler could just give a quick uh, uh, endorsement of her if he's on the call. I can't hear him. He is, but Bill, he's muted at the moment. Bill, you're muted. There you go. Yeah, Andy came to our uh, August meeting on Zoom, and uh, she seems interested and eager. And uh, someone on the board. We can't hear you, Bill. Um, yeah. Um, there you go. And so I think we're, we're very happy to, we'll be very happy to have her oh, join the board. So. Thank you, Bill. And if uh, she can do a quick introduction of herself, that'd be great. And we can ask questions. Mm-hmm. Hello, my name is Andy. My husband and I moved to Hamilton this past October from Seattle. I went to college at Endicott, so right down the road. And when I was there, I nannied for a family in Hamilton and knew that when I met my husband that we wanted to come back to this North Shore area because we have family around here as well. So we're really happy to be back. We just welcomed our first son a couple months ago. Um, I ended up resigning from my uh, full-time job where I worked in commercial construction. And I wanted to, now that I'm a full-time mom, I wanted to really start to give back to my community, which is why I was thrilled to see that there is an opening on the Zoning Board of Appeals. And I wanted to tie what I'm used to with the authorities having jurisdiction from a commercial side, but really learn more about the residential side. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be considered for this uh, associate position and looking forward to learning a lot more from the town and, and uh, the rest of the team. We welcome you to, uh, to the town and, 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 uh, and appreciate your energy and excitement to volunteer. That's what we all do every day. And we think it's great. So, um, so I don't have a lot of questions for you. I and mean, it sounds like you know, with your background and your, um, and your time allotment, uh, you'd be a great addition to the team. So I will open up to the board and see if they have any additional questions for well, you. If but, I uh, make a motion, we can second it and then we can discuss too. So that'd be great. Yeah. That'd be great. Darcy. May I make a, a motion to appoint Andrea Phillip to the Zoning Board of Appeals as an associate member? Second. Do I have a second? And we have a second, Rosie. Uh, further discussion? Uh, we'll start with uh, Darcy. Anything else you'd like to ask or uh, comment uh, on? Just welcome aboard. This mm. is, that's a, it's a great thing. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the, the um, cases are very interesting. You should, you should learn a lot. And thank you so much for, for reaching out and being willing to put yourself out there. We, we all appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. Andy, nice to meet you. And just again, you know, thank you for your volunteerism and we really need some people on the ZBA. So it's some perfect timing. We do appreciate you stepping up to the plate and, and, and giving it a go. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Jamie, anything else to add? Uh, I don't have any questions and uh, well, I can at least make our thankfulness unanimous. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, thank you. I, I also I also come from a uh, commercial construction background. I started in the planning board myself, so I think it's a great way to enter the uh, with zoning board uh, ZBA enter the uh, enter the fray of Hamilton uh, town politics. So I appreciate it, and uh, hopefully you will be uh, enjoying what you do. So I think we can go to a roll call vote, and we'll start with uh, Darcy. Darcy Dale, I. Uh, Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, I. Uh, Sean. Sean Farrell, I. Uh, Jamie. Jamie Coates and I. And uh, William Olson, I. And once again, I think it's important that we recognize that you're volunteering your time and you're uh, and you have a young family. So thank you, and uh, we look forward to your uh, comments and your involvement in town. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, so the next uh, item. Mm-hmm. On the agenda is the uh, reviewing the proposed guest flag raising policy and uh, discussion and uh, and possible vote. Um, so, 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 my my comment tonight is that um, we discuss that I'm, you know in terms of what we do on a daily basis. We don't typically vote the first that we discuss the policy. So, I don't know that we need to make a motion tonight. I think that we need to just discuss it. But 
if the board feels we need to make a motion, um, let me know. But I think we can just discuss tonight, maybe vote on a future meeting. So Darcy or Rosie or Sean or Jamie, do, do you think we need to make a motion to vote or can we just discuss it and vote on a future meeting? All at once now. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we can just discuss it. Darcy or Rosie, any comments on that? Um, I, I think it needs a little work. Um, I don't know um, a policy that um, is really um, capricious. There's no guardrails, there's no guidelines. And I can see where opposing camps could really go at each other and create terrible divisions in the town. It seems, um, I think, Bill, did you have um, a suggestion so that it would, it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't take a simple majority, it would have to take a full majority to, to um, allow a flag raising because you're going to have different people on your select board over time and you don't know what their personal politics is. And it just seems to me, um, unless it's ironclad, the policy is ironclad so that we know what the guardrails are, um, I would rather have, um, I would rather not see simple majorities ruling the day when you bring politics and political um, speech. It just, it's just a feeling I have. So is your suggestion, Darcy, that we have one of the guardrails be a majority or total? It should be unanimous. unanimous. Just like it was unanimous. for our human rights um, documents. Those were unanimously voted on. And um, yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I do it's, it's, um, and I, and I and I, I, and, I, and I, and I, yeah, and I, I actually, I actually, I actually, I actually agree. I, I agree. Hmm. Yeah, I, so I think that, that, that makes I, the most sense. I actually sense. gave, uh, so Jamie, as presented. Hmm? We lost you, Bill. I, I, yeah, I can't. Um, I must be on delay. So why don't you guys talk and I'll, I'll catch up when I get in a better area. Okay, yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, and and just you know, everybody. I think we all know this, but uh, for everybody else on, right? So the board asked the Human Rights Commission to make a recommendation, and so the the policy and the application that's in front of you was, you know, again, it's proposed, recommended by the Human Rights Commission, and uh, as and Nancy Steffes had just put in the chat. And she is planning and willing to kind of present kind of how this came about uh, and a little bit of the background if the board is. Yeah, that, that sounds good to me if Nancy wants to give a kind of a brief overview. And by the way, the, the Human Rights Commission didn't consider anything having to do with super majority or unanimous. So. Uh. Yep. Yeah, um, so. Thank you for considering this document. It was really interesting doing the research and uh, looking at other towns' um, flag policies. Um, there were four things that we wanted to consider in developing this process. And the first was that um, we wanted to recognize that residents of the town of Hamilton wish to have a process to request flag flying. That's primary. Um, we also want to ensure that the policy clearly states the decision is to approve the flag is uh, up to the Board of Selectmen. Um, this is government speech. Uh, we don't, the, the town does not have to approve anyone and does not have to give any reason why they approve or deny. And I think that the policy makes that clear. Um, we also wanted to create an easy to read policy uh, which is sort of why we put it um, used bold type and um, short paragraphs to explain the policy. Um, and then we get into the nitty gritty of it in the application. Um, you know, there were very specific things that we want to learn about this so that you have the opportunity to review. 
um, exactly what it is, um, this organization that's requesting the flag um, flying to provide us with. And then um, finally, um, we relied on the previously drafted flag policy as the framework for this. Um, and I'm, hope, I'm not sure, Joe, if, if um, council got to review the policy to make sure there was, we weren't stepping out of bounds. Um, I don't know if they've reviewed what you sent since they, they drafted the original template. Yep. Okay. Okay. So that would be, you know, something I would suggest. Um, but I, I think that, um, Darcy, your point that you need to decide on what, what is the majority to, to decide this thing, that's something that would be very good to add in if that's something that um, the board decides on. Not just the majority, it would have to be unanimous because we represent mm -hmm. everybody in town. So it's best that we all stick together. Yeah, right, and, and, uh, and, and Darcy, I agree with you. I, I said talk to Rosie earlier today, but I think it either needs, I mean, we'll decide as a group. I think it needs to be a politicized, which means it needs to be a, either a supermajority or a unanimous, unanimous decision. So I agree that that, I think that is a way to eliminate any conflict down the road because we don't know who the makeup of the board will be. That's right. Three, four, five, six years down the board down the road and we want to make sure that we do things that are in the best in the best okay. of the community not the best best interest of the board so right. i think that's a good way to do it yeah i i do too so I, I don't know about anybody else but i i think um nancy thank you for um devising this this policy i, I agree with you it's very it's very simple to understand simple to read um and it's um, and, and as Darcy says, I think it's important that we not show bias. And I, I, my feeling is that um, if somebody wants to have a guest flag raised, then they should be able to do that as long as it's within legal bounds. And it doesn't mean I have to agree with them and they don't have to agree with something I would choose. But I think showing respect and appreciation for other people is part of our is it's part of our culture. It's part of who we are as a as a country, and I think it's so important that we um, listen and and hear and be a part of other other opinions, even if they're not necessarily our own. So I I wonder if I after everybody's made their comments, I would like to make a motion. I'm I'm ready to to vote on this tonight. I don't know how others feel. Shall I make a motion that we will um, approve the proposed guest flag raising policy with the modification that as long as the board, the select board is in unison, mm -hmm. unanimous. Yeah. And I, I'd like to second that. I have a that. second. I have a second. I'll second. Okay. So do for, we'll do further discussion. Mm -hmm. So so just to back up, so my first comment was not, not to make a motion tonight, but we'll just discuss it. But now that we're going to make a motion, um, I had made some recommendations to the language. But before we get to that, to take a step back. So the mm -hmm. to, to paraphrase the language, the language basically states that the flag raising policy is up to the board of selectmen. And it's their duty and job to review the application and vote on it. And it's an, you know, basically it says the, vote of selectmen is final. So it becomes basically up to the selectmen to, to decide whether it's appropriate or not appropriate. Um, I think what Darcy Rosie and I suggest is that to apoliticize it, it becomes a majority of the board, not a majority, but a unanimous of the board, which is what we're voting on tonight. And I, and I think I agree with that because I think it shows that we all as elected officials are voting for something that we think all is in the best interest of the community without creating any distraction or or other dis, you know distractions for the town so uh jamie i given you i sent you an email with four or five other notes on it maybe yeah. we can go through those notes as well too okay uh and, and let's go one at a time yeah that uh it's gonna take me a second to pull it up because i <laughs> i had computer problems <laughs> We're getting on here, uh, and, but I, anyway, it won't take me long. In the meantime, oh, okay. in the meantime, Bill, may I make a suggestion? If if the um, 
uh, unanimous board uh, policy that we're making, if we don't like it or it doesn't work, we could bring it to town meeting and let the Hamilton legislature discuss and vote upon it. We could do that too. That's the other option. Just okay. wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. Because they did yeah, that I mean, in Hingham. That's how they did it in Hingham uh, when they um, instituted their human rights policy and all of those other things that went with it. They, they actually went to their town meeting and had this legislature vote on it. It sounds like it might make sense. So one of the things, so, 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 so while well, Jamie's pointed up, so the first thing I, I do have it up. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so your, you know, your first comment is about the, that it should have um, some statements in it regarding, I, I think, limits, let's say, on the duration and frequency. Mm. Um, right. So that a, a, an individual or organization cannot make more than three or four requests per year. That's so. That's one aspect, and then it just a, the number of days that a particular flag could be flown. So, there were your, there are your comments, Bill. So <laughs> I read. Right. Oh, or I mean, do right. I, you, want, you don't want me to read? No. It, right. No, no, that's fine. No, one at a time. So, so my my comments were that some of the research I'd done had said that an individual can only come in front of the board three times a year and each each request is only it's only seven days a year so the question is what what do we want as a town what do we think is appropriate for you know citizen or organization affiliated with hamilton to come in front of the board how many times a year you know to come raise a flag so i think there should be a limit whether it's one two three four five six seven there should be something that we all agree on i just don't know what that number is but what i read was more like three or four times a year and five to 10 days per year to fly a flag. So, um, so I'm not sure if there's any open uh, discussion on what you guys have thought about frequency and duration. Yeah. I think that's a good point, Bill. I mean, we don't want, you know, one person turning in 85 flag requests for months at a time kind of a thing. Yeah. Right. So yeah, yeah. I think limiting to that to, I think three or four is, is, is pretty good. And we can always put some kind of a caveat in there that <clears throat> if it's one of our organizations that, you know, maybe they're, they're, they're able to do more, or it's up to the board's discretion. You know, I think the same thing, like we did the pride month flag and that's a month, that's not five to 10 days. So maybe there's some clause in there that it's up to the board's discretion for the duration, but the standard duration is the five to 10 we, days, unless the applicant yeah. requests for longer and it's approved. I, th I think seven days for, for some reason. I think I, I think that's a nice number, seven days. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, I, I think that's a very good idea. And also, um, I don't know if I have any feeling about the number of times. I mean, I think three seems okay, but I actually hadn't thought about it. I don't know if anybody else has any yeah. other opinion. Um, should, can, what do you, three times? Does that three. sound? Three flags would be three weeks. So it's not going to take long for 52 weeks to get filled up. Right. Yeah. One person can, can tie it up for three weeks. So right. so maybe two times, two, two times a year? Maybe once a year and see how it goes and then decide. Um, you might have a lot of Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and all kinds of, you know, um, trail riding. And I mean, it could really get busy. Yeah, that's, you know, mean, that's I mean, actually I mean, nice. Right. Yeah. I mean, my, my recommend my recommendation tonight is that we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. Is that we not is that we not vote tonight? Is that we take all these notes and then we redistribute the um the policy, and that yeah. we think about it again because there's a lot there's a lot to uh, to think about it. It's sort of it's sort of the it's sort of the process, the application, the duration, the frequency. Um, that it's a lot to think about. So, but I I, I agree. I think it's um. I think it's in that neighborhood of like, you know, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I don't know what the right number is, but yeah. I mean, we should, we should take a straw vote. I think, I mean, Sean, we've done straw votes in the past, right? So right. we have, and, and, the, and the other thing bill is too, and, and if I remember, I don't have the policy right in front of me, but it's the board's discretion, right? It were the ultimate veto Correct. on it or the approval of it. So yes. in theory, someone could apply for a hundred flags and we could deny all of them, you know? So right. just the, uh, you know, that would be the, where the kind of hard stop on it. If, if someone is putting in a ton of applications, but 
you don't want to encourage people to right. You don't want to encourage so, people, so in. keep and the then it ties up low. us to to keep vetoing, you know, all these kind of I don't so want to say, say wacky price, requests, but lots of requests. Consistent, consistent, right? Requests. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Is it, so is it is it three applications or three successful applications? <laughs> right. A lot to think think about. And the other thing, just to, to back up just a little bit about our kind of the suggestion of the unanimous vote, just to play devil's advocate, I don't, they don't feel this way, but, you know, what if there is a situation where four out of five of us are really, you know, in favor, passionate about whatever the flag is, but one of us is just like, no, and then it's denied. Well, you, you know, know that, we, we do represent in a way, even though this is not representative government technically, we do stand for everybody. And if one of the select board members in the future has reasons for whatever, um, you know, I think you want to keep it unanimous. Right. I, I would be more comfortable with a super majority, but, you know, if the will of the board is, <laughs> if four out of five of you vote me down on this, <laughs> I'll still, know, I'll still let it go. I mean, I mean, in the note, in the notes I said to Jamie, it was it was super majority or unanimous. So I, I was between the two, Sean, because sometimes it's hard to get a unanimous but not super majority. So I'm, I'm, I you know once again I'm not gonna we're not gonna vote tonight. We're gonna think about it. In my opinion, once again, you're four of you against one of me, but I think that my recommendation is, is to not vote tonight and think about it. But I'm sort of, I, I agree it's not a majority. Yeah. It's definitely either super majority right. or a unanimous. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I think we need, so I think, I, I think that's, sorry, who's, uh, what feedback I, you know, here? Um, I, I think one of the other issues about this is if, is if citizens do see us voting as a, as a, um, unanimous body, they may be more willing to, to accept, um, something that maybe they're not thrilled about either, right? That we're, that, that, there, there may be something that I'm not thrilled about, but I would go along with it out of respect for, for my colleagues and respect for the people who want to um, have a guest flag. And I think it will it will promote a feeling more of community that we may not love every idea, but we respect it and, and we accept it. And, and that's- right. I, I mean, I think that's, different. yeah, sorry to interrupt, Rosie, but I think that's noble and that's, that's you. And I think that most of us would feel that way, but you know, we're thinking of this as a, an ongoing future policy. We don't know the will of the board coming up and the will of the board might be one person is just a stick in the mud about it. And it's a democracy it a and in a meeting. democracy, it's usually the majority that wins, but we're trying to push it a little bit more to have a super majority. So, but as Bill said, it's, it's more of a, yeah. a later discussion and, and kind of ponder it. But I think the, trying to figure out that limit of either acceptances or applications for it is something we should think about. I saw a couple of typos in it as well, I think. Um, and that's kind of minor, but Bill, do you have some other points that you sent? Jamie? Yeah. So, I, yeah. So I think that number one is that we need to think about whether it's, I think we all agree it's, it's either the supermajority or unanimous It's either four or five votes. I think we need to think about that and we'll come back in two weeks and talk about it. So I think we can ponder that for right now, but I think the good news is we agree. It's important. That's apoliticized. And the best reason, the best way to apoliticize something is make it more votes. Right. So I think right. we're all in agreement on that. We just need to decide whether it's four or five. So I think that's a great decision we've made as a board and let's put that on the table for two weeks from now. Number two is duration and frequency. My opinion is it's two or three times a year an applicant can come before us, not an approved application, but a application. So two or three times they can put an application in front of us and then every application gets approved for seven days, right? Up to, up to seven days. Um, I think we need to talk about that. So I'll start with uh, Darcy. Do you have, once again, we're not gonna vote tonight, but any comments you have on duration and frequency? Mm, I would just be very careful because if you do the math, like I said, it's only 52 weeks in a year. Some of those weeks will be tied up with perhaps, um, you know, um, maybe 4th of July or something like that. So, you know, um, I just think we have to be very careful and uh, make sure that we're, will this also affect our finances? Who's going to be in charge of running them up and down and the flagpoles and who's going to take care of the flags and put them away? And how does that work? 
Did, did we make the applicants yeah, Joe, if you can comment their about own who, flags? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's just it's just the hours to rate. Yeah, it's the hour to raise it. Yeah, you know the half an hour to raise and half an hour to lower it. But Joe, if you can comment on who typically does that right now. Uh, we you, we've had we've been using either a, a member of the police department or the uh, DPW people who are on staff. It's not uh, on staff at the time of the. On, so on the, there's the salary, time, so. in other words. Or... There's no there's no real so cost, and the flags okay. have to be provided by the no people problem. proposing the flag. So we're, we're not buying the flags. Either. Okay, yeah. that's all I I was concerned about. Um, so so Darcy, I mean I, I agree I agree with you hundred percent because it's only fifty two. We have you know thousands of residents, so. Do you have a recommendation or do you want to think about it for next time? Well, what I think is that if we're going to go forward and maybe do a six month pilot and just give each person one and see how many come forward just in, in six months, we so can one, revisit. So one time in, in six months, so one time and then a seven in seven days, seven days max. So one time per year in seven days to file I would a flag. Yeah, I would say so, um, you know, to start, okay. we can, we can okay. always add or okay. subtract. And uh, Rosie, what do you think? I kind of like the idea of a pilot program because we can always edit it. And um, I think that's a good idea, actually. For for once uh, Jamie in, or in six months. Yeah. 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 Uh, Jamie or Sean, what do you think about um, let me it's a one application per I mean we're saying six months but I think it needs to be a I mean my opinion it probably needs to be a year six months is a lot goes six months goes very quickly yes. around here right so my opinion is yes my opinion is maybe a year so it's one or two times per year seven days per time um, and then we'll revisit it a year from now I think it's good to revisit I think that's a good thing because mm -hmm. we've never done this before yep. we want to make sure we're doing the right thing this could, we think it's very, we think right now it's going to be a great thing for the town. And a year from now, we may see, we may say, oh my God, this is a detraction and it's, it is a burden and it's not worth it. So I think it's good to do a one year sort of sun sunset on this thing. Sean, uh, you've been in, you know, you've been in longest serving selectman. You've seen policies uh, been developed over time. What do you think is a good recommendation? I, th I would say uh, I would say no to the pilot and do a review on the policy in a year. You know, draft it as if we're going to keep it and then review it at the end of the year. And as far as applicants, kind of saying one application, you know, that may get tricky with organizations or committees. Like I'm thinking specifically the Human Rights Committee. You know, they may have two or three requests during the year. So I don't know if it would be a different number for a organization versus an individual. You know, I don't, I don't, we've, we've had most of the kind of people that have wanted to raise a flag has been an organization other than Tosh Blake, who sent a bunch of individual requests. So I don't, I don't know how many people are going to kind of come out of the woodwork and, ask for a flag to be raised i mean anybody could right i yeah. could i could yeah. apply for national well, donut I, day or something like that if i wanted to i guess but but you know i, I think a review think, on it would be good in yeah. a year i at darcy i think the the pilot can be a workaround in terms of review it and, and our policy actually the last line of the policy and jamie can read it says that they will we can review it whenever we want to right right it's a living so document that's the beauty yeah. of it's it a living is. document. So, um, I mean, my opinion is three times per year, seven days per flag, and and then a year from now we can review it. But, um, and Jamie, what are your comments on on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I I wouldn't be in favor of a sunset provision, um, but yeah, we can absolutely review the policy. We can, you know, put it in the calendar to do. Um, and and yeah, Jamie, if I may interrupt for just a second thinking about that kind of year review, since it's a living document as many of our policies are, and this even kind of says it in it, that if we think six months into it, that mm -hmm. there's an issue with it, we just review it and, you know, adapt and change it. Sorry. Yeah, right. We don't, right. That makes sense. It doesn't have to be a time frame. It can be, we put it on the agenda when we think it's a problem. Right. Right. 
Um, and then on the number of requests per year, I mean, I, I, I guess I haven't given it a ton of thought because we aren't getting, we don't get that many requests. So, <laughs> uh, you know, so I don't know, for a year seems right. That's 28, that's 28 days. That's a month. So you could have one person taking up a whole month. Well, yeah, but it's still but, our but that, That's rate. a different question. That's a different question because we are the ones that approve. It does. This is not a, a free speech forum where everybody gets, uh, you know. Oh, I thought you said that um, it would be four times a year. That's all. I thought you said Applic it's app year. applications, not approved applications, RC, but just applications. They could do four applications a year, but they get them all rejected and oh, they have zero see. days. So eh. four applications a year. Because right, we could do it either way. We could either do Darcy, we could either do accepted applications or we could do submitted applications, right? We could either say you can submit four applications a year or submit a hundred, but the first once you get four approved, then you're done, right? So you could yep. do it either way. I just don't know the right way to do it, but uh, well, we'll that's what I'm looking it. for your guidance on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think I think we'll I think we can table that for now and we can come back in two weeks and talk about duration and frequency. But right now we're somewhere between one and four. And I think we're all kind of agree seven days per application makes sense. So yeah. the week. So um, so we have two questions to think about: the supermajority versus unanimous, and one, two, three, or four applications per year, and then um, the living document. The next item I had, uh, Jamie, was um, does it require a public? And, and Joe, maybe you can come. Does it require a public hearing or? I mean, obviously we need to talk about it at a, at a sports selectman. So the question is the timing of it. So someone applies for it, they send you Joe an application and then how many days do we have before we have to review it? We can't just bury it in the agenda. We have to review it within so many days of the application. Mm -hmm. And then does it have to be a public hearing or is it a, just an agenda on the, is it agenda item or so Joe, if you can kind of talk us through what you think the process should be. Um, I, get, I mean, it could be similar. I, I, it, Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't the, does the policy not include anything like that? I thought we had talked about it at the HRC. Yeah, so the, I mean, the, number days ahead. this draft of the policy does say how how four to five days prior to the requested date of flag raising. It does allow the uh, select board to do it in a shorter time, but if people want, you know, anyway, but it's supposed to be submitted 45 days ahead. So forty. So that means we have forty. I mean, so, but so we have forty-five days to approve it. Which you'd is have, maybe have at least three meetings. You'd have at least three so meetings. Three meetings. The time it's appointed. Uh, it's it's uh, okay. applied for till you would uh, be able to. I probably I probably play. don't have a I probably don't have a problem with that one. Three meetings. I think that's probably appropriate because the first meeting you announce it, the next meeting you kind of discuss it, and the third meeting you can vote if you're not ready to vote at the second meeting. So I think three meetings kind of makes sense. Um, Darcy, do you think that makes sense as well, too? Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I, you know, um, we can always change our mind, right? We can always shorten a period or. Right. Correct. Yeah. We can always make a motion to vote and we can vote earlier. So, but three meetings seems like the longest we would need, right? The longest, so, I would say. Yeah. 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 Sean, you agree? Yeah. Jamie? Yeah. Yeah. And Rosie? Yes. Okay. So, Three means, uh, and um, and sorry, Jamie, to make you uh look at you have in front of you right now. What was the what was the so fourth note I had? Yeah, so you had a question about do we need a different flagpole than the one next to the tank? Yeah, so I know there was discussions when we did the uh, Juneteenth and other flag raising that was the only flag we have available at Pat is the flagpole next to the 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 you know the tank which the veterans associate with being their flag so so joe i just didn't know if you know who who man i don't know the sort of the history of that flagpole maybe sean you do but do we need to put another flagpole is that the appropriate flagpole to use i think it's better that we use the one at Patton than the one at town hall for this type of event but um but i don't know who actually you know paid for that flagpole installed it what the history of it is i just want to make sure we're doing the right thing for the people that work to have that flagpole installed it's a, it's a town flagpole to my knowledge, but it, it is a, a, you know, the, the American Legion and stuff, they feel it's a memorial site. So, mm -hmm. you know, we may think about adding another flagpole somewhere 
in the park would be my suggestion. Uh, Joe, do you have any for, sorry, Darcy, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, these are things we can hash out also, um, you know, because we're going to be meeting three more times at, at the most over this. So these are all things we can hash out over time too. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not against adding another flagpole. I've, I've installed flagpoles previously. They're not a huge capital expenditure. I think um, they're about, I think we replaced the one at the cemetery and I think it was around $3,000 of Joe. I think it was about that. Wow. Uh, Chief Stevens had said he could get us a, a flagpole, uh, a price on our new flagpole to be installed somewhere uh, pretty easily. I haven't asked him to do it yet, um, yeah. but um, it, it, I think probably somewhere on the order of three to $5,000, depending on uh, how, how, how much luck we have in a bidding process. So, Right. And, and how fancy of a pole we get, whether yeah, it's right. the ropes on the outside, the ropes interior, yeah, yeah. the height right. and, you know, the light finish. And, and, yeah. And lights so, and so lights maybe and given, given the expense of that, maybe we could uh, just sort of take that under advisement and sort of see how this goes a, a little bit before we decide to, invest um that amount of money uh, i i don't know um it's my thought i agree no i agree rose you're not going to vote on this tonight but i think i just wanted to make sure it's a concern that we address so that we don't once again it's supposed to be an inclusive event and a, a, a positive for our community and i don't want to alienate anybody by making this policy so yeah. uh jamie what else do i have on there on my notes uh Hey, excuse me, <laughs> um, about flags um, associated with state and federal holidays flying at town hall. Yeah, so when we when we talked last time, <clears throat> which was back in the spring, we talked about that the state house, Mass State House, had a policy where they would fly any flag associated with a state or national holiday without issue. Um, and we're talking about flying flags for other things as well, too. So the question was, is that do we want to have a two part policy where that the flagpole at Patton, whatever flagpole it may be, can be applied for for this process. But the flag at um, at town hall can have any flag associated with a you know, national or federal, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. a federal or state holiday, mm -hmm. which doesn't really need the same approval process because it's already been approved by our state government, our federal government. Um, and it can fly underneath the American flag like it has done for years. So I don't have a problem with that. I just wanted to get your thought process on having a sort of a two-part policy for two different flagpoles. Yeah, I, I think the memorial flagpole at the um, town hall should be just for the state and federal holidays, because it is a sacred site for a lot of families here, and it has been for decades. So, um, and it's really hard to get people close enough to see anything because there's no parking and the flag is, is really hidden by trees. So if you're going to have a celebration, like a, you know, fun, um, you know, lots of laughter and cheering and stuff, it's more appropriate to have it at Patton Park than it would be at that very solemn memorial. I, I agree, but you're okay with a recognized state and federal holiday flag if at requested to be flown at the uh, town hall. Oh yes, yes. Okay. Because like you say, it's already, you know, it's already part of the right. protocols for flag flying. Yeah, so I think, I, so I'm, so, so I think that needs to be part of our flag flying policy too. And I think, um, if Sean or Jamie or Rosie want to add to that, but I think that, that that's something we should talk about next time too. Um, anybody else? So uh, Jamie, is that all my comments that I had? That was all of them, yeah. Jamie, do you have anything comments to add to that? Um, I mean, I, I think we should, we would need to think about whether that includes Things for which there's been, you know, a proclamation. So not everything is a holiday, right? Um, so just talking about the last item, and I, and I, you know, I think certainly the solemnness of the uh, venue is important. Um, and I, you know, but I guess the more sacred it is, the more I think that it, you know, it's important that important messages get communicated. Um, yeah. 
So, uh, you know, I think the, so, the, you know, so the pride flag, right? There's not, I don't think there's a state or federal holiday, but there is a proclamation uh, regarding it. And it's a, it's a very important message to communicate in a, in a solemn way. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, Sean, any other comments to add to the uh, policy before we uh, move on and we talk about it again next week or two weeks? Uh, not that I can think of. I mean, I think like Jamie's point, you know, as long as the state and the feds are endorsing it or there's some kind of local proclamation, it doesn't necessarily need to be a holiday that we would, it would not need approval because it's just part of the, part of the kind of pre, I guess, pre-approved. All right. If it flies in front of the state house, it can fly in front of the town hall, right? Right. Yes. All right. Uh, Darcy, any other comments to add before we move on? No, I'm, I'm ready to move on. <laughs> okay. And uh, Rosie, any other notes that we should think about over the next couple of weeks before we uh, talk about it again? No, I think those are all good points. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely will think about everything and it's good. We will bring it back um, next meeting. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about supermajority versus versus unanimous. We're going to talk about duration and frequency. We're going to talk about um, whether it makes sense to put a new flagpole up, and then we're going to talk about uh, the second flagpole at town hall, whether it's a state or federal holiday or a proclamation. Um, I think this is good discussion, and I think we made some progress. And um, I'm glad that we uh, took the summer off to think about it, and I think that. I thank the uh, uh, Jamie. Thank you. Yeah, thank your committee. You're in for uh, coming back to us with some good language to review. So, and I think it was very simple. I, I like simple. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. simple, simple is good. Um, but I think it needs to have uh, uh, some goalposts to stay within, so that we don't uh, that we think about future boards and future um, <laughs> considerations. Um, that's our job, not just think about us and what we're doing, but think about what future. Mm -hmm. the future community will look like. So I think this is a good discussion. I think it's good for us to think about it again. And, and Joe, we can put out the agenda for um, the next meeting. Yeah, I, I will. Can you please send me the uh, comments you sent to Jamie so that I can incorporate mm -hmm. those and in, in, uh, along with these four things and make sure I clean up the language and make sure there's no typos or anything and we'll get it redone before the next meeting. Yeah, Joe, do you have any comments? Uh, sorry, I didn't go to you. Do you have any comments to add based on uh, what you've heard or seen from the community? Me? Yes. Nope. It's policy any decisions. Difference? It's all okay. yours. Policy. Okay. No, <laughs> policy. No, it's all yours. No, no, you're the no, policy not, makers, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not looking. I'm not. I'm not looking for. I'm not looking for policy. I'm looking for any comments that you've heard from the community you want to share with us. So, but oh, no, thanks. No, um, no, you know, most I haven't. You know, you've heard most of the comments I've heard. You know, I have. We haven't. We've had two flag raisings uh, this past year and one the year before. I haven't had any negative comments back. Uh, back, of course, I don't know that people would have necessarily expressed those. Our neighbors and one did have a little bit of problem with with some of the flags that they had put up, but we didn't have any of those, those mm -hmm. problems, thankfully. Um, so, you know, I think that, uh, you know, as as it was alluded to earlier, it's it's government speech. So you five uh, five members of board of selectmen are the ones to determine how the government in Hamilton speaks. So, okay. All right, we will move on to the uh, next agenda item, which is. <clears throat> Sorry, let me pull it up here. Yeah, change Approved of change of manager for the American Legion, uh, AP Gardner Post 194. So, Joe, if you can walk us through that. Had to unmute there. Sorry. He's muted. You, you muted yourself when you're done. Sorry. All right, here we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, you have it. You should have the complete packet in your um, in your folder. The uh, club is changing the manager. Um, that's necessary change because their previous managers moved on. Um, man, new managers are, I think, a, a originally Hamiltonian. I think he's living in Ipswich now, but he's frequently at the club. Most folks know him, uh, and uh, uh, he's committed to you know kind of following all the rules and trying to help the club get itself back open again. Um, they can't really reopen and, and start to serve our veterans again until um, until they get a new manager in place. So, um, I. I looked it over last week with uh, Lori before we sent it out. It looks like the application is in order. I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get slapped with my hand if if I'm if I'm wrong about that. I apologize, but it, it looked it looked in order to, to me. Um, we 
hope that you would endorse the change manager for the club. And is there anybody on the line to talk about it? I don't see anybody here. Um, it seems like just a standard change in manager that we've we've done for other entities in the past. I think we've done it for Fifth and Walnut a couple so, of times. So, with change managers and so, yeah. so Sean, if you want to, Sean, are you ready to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we approve the change in manager um, request uh, with the ABCC for the American Legion. Do I have a second? Second. second. Uh, further discussion? Nope, I'm hoping that they uh, are able to get back on their feet with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so let's start with uh, Sean. Uh, Sean Farrell, aye. Uh, Rosie? Rosie Kennedy, aye. Uh, Darcy? Darcy Dale, aye. Uh, Jamie? Jamie Knudsen, aye. And William Olson, I. So, yes, so I hope this helps you uh, proceed uh, with what you do to help the community. So, thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the uh, approve revision of plan for HW Shop Local mm -hmm. Fall Festival, which is the, uh, the 19th, which is a Sunday, September 19th. Um, and Joe, just I. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll just to this, it's, it's kind of phrased that way. It's a little awkwardly the way it's phrased. Um, uh, Megan McGovern and I believe Karen Moulton are both here um, from the shop local event. Uh, we're all looking forward to it there. Um, I think that we had some confusion um, when we got the uh, applications for the licenses because uh, for, for the one day licenses, because we're the request is to have two on Railroad Ave and one on um, on Bay Road. So I'm not sure that that was uh, what the board talked about at the last meeting. So we decided to talk about it as kind of a revision of their plan or their proposal. Um, the event is, has been approved for 12 to five on that day. Um, and Megan and Karen can answer questions that you may have about, uh, about this. So is this about the event per se or per, about the one day electrical license or sort of combined? I think it's mostly about, um, you know, the fact that the, 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 the board talked in, in great detail at the last meeting that we're what the meeting you approved this this uh, event about having the the bulk of the activities take place on um, railroad and specifically talking about having the one day licenses be used inside the park, the municipal parking lot at the corner of railroad and Willow. So, right. you know, with uh, one application being at a different location, that's different from what you talked about and it had voted to approve. So I thought you should talk about it before you um, before you discuss the licenses themselves. Right. It's gotcha. a little bit out of the scope of what we approve with the, mm. with the kind of, uh, is it true North that's across the street? It is. Yes. So yes. Um, it's switch brewery and cellar door winery will be the main beer garden for the event. Um, and they will be both placed in uh, the railroad Ave uh, Accord food pantry parking lot. Um, and then secondarily, um, Karen Moulton's here from TN Lam TM Landscaping, and they um, their offering for the event is to do a sort of lawn garden party um, as a service provider, and they're having a 15 walnut um, pop up stand there, some um, some turf grass, and some Adirondack chairs and light music. Mm -hmm. um, and along with that, uh, they they um, 15 walnut actually has an agreement with um, True North Brewery. Uh, they they have uh, a beer specifically that's for the Serenity Group, which is on which owns Fifty Walnut. Mm -hmm. So uh, the request is to have uh, True North at their location for the event as their offering. So there's three so, total so, liquor licenses. <laughs> so, so so Megan, while the board 100 percent promotes and supports this festival, we spent a lot of time over the last month dealing with one day special liquor licenses and really getting into the detail of that. And okay. one of the requ one of the requirements of that is that the is that for a for profit organization, the beer and wine needs to come from very specific vendors, and we were able to find True North and sorry, who's the other beer vendor? Was uh, um, Ipswich Brewery. Ipswich Brewery on the list, but we did not find Cellar Door on the list of approved mass uh, uh, providers of beer and wine for a, so Joe, I don't know, Joe, I, I communicated with you earlier today. Joe, did you get any response on that email I sent you earlier today? He's muted. I don't have a response. I have, uh, I, I, I had reached out to Megan. I tried to, I had no success in reaching Cellar Door. I reached so, out to Megan, but so, it was only really before so, the meeting. So. So, so Cellar Door didn't show up on the mass list of approved vendors for um, providing 
beer and wine, to, you know, to a, a special one day license. So if you can just connect the dots on that, I think that was the only issue I had with that was that um, because we have done a lot of research over the last month due to other issues, not your necessarily your event, but other events mm -hmm. in town. So that was the only open item I had. I don't know if anybody else had a chance to look at the applications, but I'm fine with everything except uh, just to confirm that uh, Salvador can um, sell wine at a for a one day license in Massachusetts. Uh, Sean, do you have any other comments on that? Yeah, just just confirmation about the cellar door being able to do it with the mass license. But the other thing is, I guess I'm a little hesitant about cross Bay Road from Railroad Avenue with the with the vendor and a lot of people crossing the street back and forth. I mean, I know we'll have the Railroad Ave closed, but we'll have a lot of people going back and forth over Bay Road. Mm -hmm. I, just, I worry a little bit about that traffic. And if we have a police detail, I can't remember what the plan was and and stuff like that. I just want to make sure that everybody's safe, especially if we've got a lot of people in the TM landscaping parking lot and people tend to kind of spread out. And I would worry about people gravitating into even the parking lot next door to TM where it gets into the Wenham side past the kind of the kind of tank barriers there, I guess, um, you know, in, in traffic coming in out of those shops as well. That's my only kind of concern. Um, I did speak to Lieutenant James, who is uh, spearheading the event plan, and we did plan on having a detail officer at the crosswalk there, um, more specifically because the trolley stop it will be on that side of the street um, okay. for, for ease of kind of going around the loop uh, near Talbot's. And so the home. trolley will kind of exit on the shopping center side? Um, it will, yes, it will pull in near 300 main go around and then exit through Talbot's and the liquor store okay. and go back out on, on one a. So we did plan on having um, some detail at that crosswalk um, specifically for that as well. Um, and and, and we, if I can interrupt for just a second, have you talked yeah. to Talbot's and let them know that you'll be doing all this in their parking lot? Um, we have not, we have not yet. Okay. Are they open on, are they open on Sundays? Um, they are. They are, and they're hoping sure. to participate. So I have okay. spoken to oh, them, yes, Karen. not specifically Thanks, Karen. about the parking, but I have spoken to them about the event. And um, I spoke a lot with Peggy, and I'm drawing a blank, Lynch, um, who I believe is maybe the manager, assistant manager over there, and very supportive of it. So I'm happy to make sure that they're very clear that there's going to be a stop there. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll encourage it because they'll get some foot traffic probably, but you know, yeah. just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. It's not a surprise and mm -hmm. they're not angry about people in their parking lot. Mm. Absolutely. And I also just wanted to let you know that the way we were setting it up is the um, True North beer truck and the 15 um, pop-up, they were actually going to set up between those ugly yellow barriers of the TM landscaping parking lot and the building. So there should be no pushing of people into that, what I'm calling a drive-through. Yeah. They should be pushed and 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 um, towards the front of the building where we will have the fake grass and the Adirondack chairs laid out. Okay. Thank you. And so can okay. I circle back on, on cellar door for a minute? Um, so yes. What, um, what do we need from them uh, to be an approved vendor or are they, are they not? I'm not sure if I'm understanding how, how that works. So the, so the research I did make, the research I did make, was that they're a mm -hmm. main, are they a main vineyard, vineyard based out of Maine? Is that correct? The um, cellar door I, I located? I, I think that's a, a separate cellar door. That's the actual vineyard. This okay. specifically cellar door okay. um, is uh, a shop that, works with um state approved distributors hmm. okay so, so different okay so so joe can forward you the list okay. of the of the aabc approved list of um vendors to purchase purchase you know wine and beer from for a for-profit event okay. um, as long as they're so it's like i said ipswich and true north were on that list so no problem okay. i just couldn't find a true i couldn't find a cellar door but if they're buying it from somebody else who's on that list that'd be great so they I are. It's, it's not did. actually their yeah. wine. Sorry. It's, it's, gotcha. okay. it's other, other distributed wine. Um, they gave okay. me a, a list of a, a few that they've worked with that are state approved. 
Um, okay, so it's, that's, that's it's, fine. It's different vineyards wine that they sell at their store. Okay, good. Yeah, I just looked up cellar door and it wasn't on there, so that probably was the issue. But if we can just complete the uh, complete the uh, circle sure. on that, that'd be great. Absolutely. All right. So uh, I'm kind of guessing that if their <clears throat> if their vendors are approved on the state list, there shouldn't be an issue. You think that's correct, Bill or Joe? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and the list has many names on it. It's hundreds of people, hundreds of lists. Uh, the other okay. thing on our on our application process, it's the next as as obviously that you've reviewed the application with the uh, Hamilton police. Uh, so that has that happened as well too? All yes. three have been reviewed. Okay, great. So Joe, anything, I know we're not, are we voting? Uh, do we have to vote on this one, Joe, or do we vote on the next yeah, item? You don't have another meeting before the event, so you have to vote <laughs> on them tonight. Yep. We're um, voting on the uh, one day permits or voting on the, uh, I'm trying to figure out what we're voting on on this agenda each, item, Joe. Well, on this agenda, What's item, the motion? You, you, I, I, if you want to take a vote to amend your earlier vote to allow the, the activities across the street, you could do that and then vote on the one day liquor licenses in the next agenda item. However, okay, you do, have a, do, I, do I, I have a motion to, yeah, yeah, do I'll make a motion a, to. A, yep. Sorry, Darcy, you want to go, do it? Ahead, go ahead. I will make a motion to approve the revision of a plan for ha Hamilton Wenham Shop Local Fall Festival, including the TM landscaping uh, venue addition. Second. Thanks, Darcy. Do I have a second? Second from Sean. Uh, roll call vote. We will do. So start with Darcy. Darcy Dale, aye. Uh, Sean. Sean Farrell, aye. Uh, Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Uh, Jamie. And Knudsen, aye. And uh, William Olson, I, and thank you again, uh, Megan and Karen and everyone thank involved. You. I think this is a great event and we will be very thank supportive of it. So thank Do you. We have to approve their three. Not, yes. 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 Yeah, yes. Do that. I wouldn't leave until you get to so, <laughs> Megan, no, I wouldn't no, yes. to no, check out yet. So, yeah, I shall make a motion to approve three separate one day liquor licenses for Hamilton <clears throat> Wenham Shop Local event on September 19th. I have a second. I need a second. Second. Uh, second. I'm mean, mute. <laughs> second from Jamie. Okay. Thank so you. So further further discussion. So I I, I reviewed them all, and yeah. my only comment was the um was a cellar door where they're procuring their liquor from. Um. So I'm not sure, Joe, exactly what we should do until we know that information. But I think we should just approve it. Um, based on the fact that they will procure their liquor from an approved uh, that's supplier. What I would suggest, I guess. That's so that exactly say, what I was going to suggest. Approve yeah. it pending the yes. verification. Do you want me to modify the motion? Yep. Bill? Sure. Thanks, Darcy. Okay. Yes. Yes, I, please. I, I move that we approve three separate one-day liquor licenses for ha Hamilton Wenham Shop local event on September 19th. And I, it just flew out of my head. What, what was the... Modification with the stipulation that they purchase with the stipulation that they purchase from a mass approved vendor. Yes, with the stipulate so moved. Yes. <laughs> second. I have a second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? I'm good with that. Any further discussion from Jamie, Darcy, Rosie, or or Jamie or Sean? Sounds like nope. a good time. We'll do roll call vote. Uh, Darcy. Darcy Dale, aye. I'll do roll call. Vote. Uh, Sean. Sean Farrell, aye. Uh, Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. And uh, Jamie. Jamie Knudsen, aye. And William Olson, aye. Uh, Megan and Karen, anybody else? You need anything else from us to help make this event successful? We can help out with anything else you want to announce or ask for. This is your opportunity to uh, to do that. Yeah, now. we just would love your help in any way getting our our town there. Uh, we're doing a lot of marketing coming up in the next. Um, few weeks and um, we'll be on the digital sign boards and we have some sandwich boards around town and we've reached out to all the local um, media centers and all the shops that are working with us and the Facebook event. So um, our, our goal is just to get our town there to support our vendors. So any help you can do with that. We will be, be there. Thank you. We'll, thank you. we'll be there and we'll keep promoting it. So well, thank you very much. Thank and you. I can't wait oh, to yeah. dunk uh, Hey. Dunk Joe in the dunk tank. <laughs> I did. I did hear that he was up first. Hopefully, um, the sun will still be out and bright and shining while I'm in the dunk tank because it's going right. to be really cold in that water. <laughs> that water is always so cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Um, may I ask just one follow-up question? So um, my instruction is just to follow up with Joe about um, and confirm the vendor list. Yep. I'll, send it okay. to, I'll send you the list tomorrow. And as long as uh, you sell the door can identify which vendors on that list they're going to work with, we'll, I'll, I'll inform the board and the license will be approved. Excellent. Yeah, jo Joe, so Joe, has the, Joe has the authority to sign the license. So mm -hmm. we've given him that authority. So, um, so you give him the information, he will sign the license. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank right. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the uh, vote to close the warrant for October 23rd, 2021, special town meeting. So the only, and once again, we'll accept the motion, but Joe, the only thing I wanted to add to that, to the warrant article was I'm going to propose that we add an article to recommend uh, uh, repaying the Comiskeys for their tax they paid over the years in the total of uh, roughly thirteen thousand dollars over a three-year period, uh, with a uh, yep. um, with a, 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 a sort of a you know six five four or five four three whatever the number is sort of a, a staggered approach to uh, to use our budget wisely to repay them back but not overburden the town and the community with a uh, with a uh, uh, depleting our free cash. So I'm looking to Tom. I don't know if Tom is on today. Tom's, Tom's not on yet, but he should be. He should be getting on shortly. I had texted him a few minutes ago that we were moving closer to this article, uh, mm -hmm. to this item on the agenda. Um, he did. I did have a conversation with Tom, and I'll let him expound upon it when he gets on. But um, currently, the only mechanism to do what you're suggesting would be a home rule petition. So you'd be asking to establish a, um, an item, a board of selectmen sponsored item for a home rule petition to refund the money to the Kaminsky's uh, on the terms that you're suggesting. And um, then that would have to be approved by the town and then have to go and be approved by the legislature in order for the town to act on. If so, Joe, I, if so we, I, yes, sorry, go ahead, Sean. If we went with Peter's submitted citizens petition, we wouldn't have to do a home rule. No, there's no, there's no, there's no way to abate the taxes um, without doing a home rule petition, according to okay. Tom. And that's why I'd let, I'd let Tom, you know, answer that more further, okay. but um Based on legal advice from town council, this is th this is the proper way to, to do that. So home rules are kind of only mechanism that we have. Okay. Right. And um, and as a staggered approach, so until Tom gets on, I guess we can talk about the idea of doing a petition. That's, that's I'm sorry, doing doing an article that's sponsored by the board of select selectmen or the select board. Um, for this, and it's around thirteen thousand four hundred dollars. So uh, my recommendation is to a staggered approach to, to, to uh, obviously repay the Comiskeys, but obviously not overburden the taxpayer and our free cash by doing a staggered approach over three years, similar to what we've done with other people and other tax abatements over the years. So um, I recommend that we sort of stagger it as a um, five four three um, approach. Five thousand four thousand three thousand. Obviously, it's thirteen thousand. So we got to sort of do the do the uh, specific dollars, but. Somewhere that, it, you know, six, I'm, I'm trying to think you, Bill, you, and you suggested that to me earlier when we talked that kind of staggered approach. And I think I'm, I'm fine with that. I wonder if, if we, the Kaminsky's paid three or so years of taxes. If we, what if we paid the Kaminsky's back the direct amount, like the first year they paid, let's say $5,000 in taxes. We pay them that amount back the next year. They paid this, we pay them that back. So I'm it's just kind of clean. Yeah. It's just yeah, kind of that amount that they, it's almost yeah, like yeah. they, we abate that, that year. Yeah. I think it's fine. I think, I think I just, I'm just, I'm in favor of, of paying the back. I'm in favor of a staggered approach beyond that. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I would, I look for you guys to tell me what you think we should do per year, whether it's even for three, but I think Sean has a good, I don't know if we have that information on Joe or, or, or Peter or, I mean, had that information, but I'm sure we could probably find it. Um, well, right. I, I would like to, I mean, I had a conversation with Kevin. You know, the longer this goes on, uh, anybody who is has an, a, a situation where they are owed money, there should be interest. And the Kaminsky and Maureen Clark have not asked for anything. The idea of going to back to a homeland p petition uh, for th this amount of money, I think that we have been to town meeting now four times and the vote on each meeting has been so overwhelmingly 
in favor of, of what I perceive as solving the problem. The people believing that uh, what their vote has meant is that uh, uh, the Kaminsky's who had an invalid taxation because they were not owners. And I won't get into the details here, but I'll just uh, to reiterate the fact that uh, to kick this can down the road once more, uh, I would say that the watchdogs for finances for Hamilton may well not be the Board of Selectmen. You may be caught in a place where where uh, town council feels forced to ask you to return the money via a home rule petition. I would maintain that the finance and advisory committee with their budget of nearly $100,000 or more uh, and their legal ability to vote any way they please without any constraint because they view the matter uh, appropriate to vote on. Maybe something you want to consult with them about. Uh, you know, P Peter, I, I appreciate your comments. And I think that um, we've spent a lot of time and effort over the last three or four years to make sure we get this right. And that's why we've gone and done this special act with you know, and unfortunately, this issue of repayment of taxes did not come up until this year. And right. so it wasn't something that we voted upon in any town. The repayment of taxes didn't come up in the previous, you know, special town meeting or annual town meeting discussions. It was about for future taxes and abatement of taxes, but not <clears throat> previous to pay taxes. So this is a, a new issue that was not voted on previously. While I support now that it's been brought up, the repayment of taxes, I think it's, you know, response for us to do it over a staggered approach and not take free cash and, and one year and pay, pay it back. But, um, you know, once again, I'm, I'm one out of five, so we can have that discussion. And I know that Christina Shank Hargrove, a member of the FinCom committee is on the call as well too. And she's not required to make comment, but she can, if she, she wants to, but, um, but right now in terms of, uh, you know, I, I, what I'm, what I'm in favor of Peter is that we will do a board of selectmen, sponsored article and not require a citizen's petition mm -hmm. to put this on the warrant article. We will vote on this article and hopefully we will vote favorably on it. And it allows the Comiskeys to retain their, to, you know, regain their, their, their assets that they've paid to the taxes. But in the, in the same breath, we also <laughs> feel that we, that we legally, we, we legally at the time before the special act was passed, we legally were able to, um, to charge taxes on the property. And I think that's the point we're gonna to agree to disagree on, but I think that we show through our three town councils over that period that we were allowed to charge tax on the property, which is why we had to pass a special act to be able to not charge tax on the property. So I would, I, um, I would, so I, I, think would that, yeah. I would take uh, exception uh, to this. I am not a lawyer, but the fact of the matter is that the Kevin Kaminsky and Maureen Clark do not own, have never owned that property. That property is listed for a period of time, 2011, I think, through 2020. Uh, it took me 15 minutes to have John Spidell write a new property card that had no mention of them as the owners, because they have never been the owners. We have been to the Registry of Deeds. They have no record of anybody by that name owning any property in the state of Massachusetts, the town of Hamilton, or at 550 Highland Street. This was strictly an act by our assessors to go down to Topsfield and copy a clever way of altering the records so that they could have the authority to tax. Yeah, I mean, I'm Peter, I think we're going to agree to disagree on this, but the, the end, the end result is that we're going to try and make it right. But we didn't, but we, we as a town do not feel we did anything wrong, which is why we worked hard to 
it, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have had to pass a special act with the state house of Massachusetts to not tax the property if we weren't entitled to tax the property. So the fact that the, that the state of Massachusetts to tax the property, the 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 key thing that people forget is that uh, uh, and any property owner in Hamilton, if they had a property card that had a book and page number of 00000/00 and a sales date that was patently false would not feel that they own their property and they would feel threatened the taxes were already paid by the state. and in fact for the state to convey that property to anyone requires a two-thirds vote of the state legislature and requires a piece of paper from the registry that shows that the title has been transferred. That document, no documents exist in the files of the Hamilton assessors. So I find it very difficult to see how there's been any justification that there was no wrongdoing. Well, well Peter, I, I guess I would say the good news is that we, we are going to recommend a uh, four segment sponsored article to repay their taxes. So I think that again, they is the positive thing. I think the staggered approach is the fiscal responsible thing to do. And I think that that is a good compromise for everyone to be whole, made whole at the end of the day without taking a bunch of money out of free cash and changing our budget. But Tom, I don't know if you, you know, Joe, I don't know if it's appropriate for Tom to make any comments now or not on the process that we're looking to do. Um, I'm sorry, I just logged in, so I missed the first part of the conversation. Um, so as I previously opined, uh, the only, only way to abate any taxes on this property that have been paid would be through special legislation. Uh, as you know, the town previously adopted uh, or authorized the Board of Selectmen to pursue special legislation, which was approved by the legislature, I think last year. So we could do, you know, essentially we would follow the same process here where we would draft a town meeting warrant article and draft legislation oh, really? to allow the town to abate the taxes that had previously been paid. I, so I, I would just, just ask you one quote. question, uh, Mr. Councillor. Uh, how can you use the word abate other than to a landowner? So under general laws, chapter 59, section 2B, uh, any property that's owned by the state or the federal government that is tax exempt, at least to somebody who is not tax exempt is subject to taxation. So that leasehold interest is taxable. Um, by property so, tax? Yes. yes. That's what we've been talking about, Peter. Yes. So, yes, that's that's how the law reads, Peter, which is why we had to pass a special act to not tax the property. So I don't want to belabor ourselves okay. in, in old news. We're looking, we're trying to move yes. ahead okay. and trying to solve this issue. So, so Tom, if we can, if you can help us draft an article that we can put, uh, we can put in the October meeting um, to allow us to to refund the taxes over a three year stipulation. And, and Sean's recommendation was sort of a, mine was a, rec, a staggered approach of like a five, four, three, that adds up to like somewhere around 13,000, um, but do it in, in, the, in the nature of the, whatever they paid in taxes. So year one, if they paid 5,000, year two is the 4,000, and, and obviously there's hundreds of dollars associated with them to add up to the 13,000. So Tom, if you can help us draw up the legal means for that. And Joe, what's the time frame for us to uh, draft that article? To we'll, get be, uh, we'll be spending the next, uh, well, about just, just under a month to before we finalize warrant language. So after the, we vote tonight to close the warrant, there's, um, do you want me to show you what other articles we have um, listed real quick? Or just, uh, just, let, let's just, let's just, let's okay. just resolve yeah. this one first. So, so, and just to give Peter a fair assessment of the process here. So, so Tom, you draft up an article, we put on a, we vote for it in October. What's the process after that? What, what, when would the committee see their money if we voted, we voted favorably in October? So if if the town meeting, the state. Right, if town meeting approves the article, then it would be sent up to the state delegation to bring before the general court. 
it will require approval by both the House and Senate, and then obviously the governor would need to sign off on that as well. So it's hard to say how long that process would take. It, it varies depending upon essentially what the schedule is at the state house and, and what other bills are would take more of a priority over something like this. But my guess would be that, my hope would be anyways, that they would approve it within say six months or so. Um, and then once that takes place, the special act would go into effect and then we would be able to act on it. Could I ask one? I'd just like and to add, Bill, that the, that the, uh, yeah, the previous right. time that we went through, the, through this special act process, it took a little longer because right after town meeting approved it, we were, we were in the uh, pandemic. So yeah. uh, it, it took longer yeah, because yeah. the legislature actually didn't move and, and didn't take up any of these types of articles um, until uh, uh, actually just about a year ago. Uh, um, typically, it's about six to eight months. Can, and, can and, I ask one yeah, more question? Peter, 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 Peter one, one second, Peter, sorry. Um, and then I'll let you go. Uh, so Tom and, and Joe, has, has the state house ever voted down anything that we've recommended for special act in your, in the recent history? They've asked for change of language. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, ha I haven't seen okay. something like that. Typically if the town supports it, town meeting votes for it, generally speaking, the legislature will approve it. Uh, yeah. uh, Peter, go ahead. Uh, what was your so, question? Uh, Tom, oh, sorry. Go uh, ahead, Joe. What would prevent the, uh, uh, is there anything that could prevent the finance and advisory committee uh, equipped with both cash and their powers to simply uh, vote to uh, 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 write a check to the Kaminsky clerks uh, right now? Yes, there's no legal basis to allow the finance committee to do so. I'd just like to, I'd like to add to that the, the reserve fund from the uh, financing advisory committee has to be initiated by a request from the administration and approved by the board of selectmen to the finance advisory committee to, to pay a debt, pay something that we're owed, and then has to be approved by the finance and advisory committee. And it also has to be approved um, in, in that process by the finance director. If the finance director, the town accountant, whoever the CFO is in the municipality, decides that the uh, payment or the, the, the debt being sought was uh, able to be budgeted, then then they can they can turn it down themselves out of hand. The finance director has final say on things that go before the finance and advisory committee for payment. It can, has to be for something that was not foreseen to be budgeted. If it could have been foreseen to be budgeted, it wouldn't be allowed. This clearly wasn't foreseen. Well, I mean, I, I, Peter, the only issue I would say is that we spent years going through this and let the Kaminsky's draft up the special act. And I just, my, my only ask was that if they, if they wanted to be asked, they, it should have been in the previous special act that we had drafted up. So I think the win here for the Kaminsky's is that we are willing to consider a second home rule petition, but you know, in, 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 in sort of a, uh, a, um, compromise, which I would have said that, you know, that they should have, when they had the opportunity to draft out the federal act, if this was important to be refunded for tech, they should have asked for that at the time and this would have shortened up the process. But I think the win is that we, um, uh, that I'm going to recommend that we, and I think we need a motion for that, Joe, to, to create that article. But I think that, um, yeah, that if, we see, if, yeah. If I, if I can, Mr. Chair, I, I would suggest that you and the board allow me to make a motion to put a placeholder on the warrant for this. And then when we get language from Tom and Kevin's counsel agreed on that, we look at it, review it to put it on the warrant. Uh, Sean, if you want to make a motion? Yeah, yeah I make a motion that we uh, reserve a placeholder for a home rule petition uh, for 550 Highland Street, the Dodge uh, house. Second, uh, repay the payment of um, paid taxes. Second. Over a three year staggered period yeah we can well i th i think we'll leave that and we can discuss that okay. as we go because we've forgot some more details about it i mean maybe okay. maybe my suggestion of the kind of what they had paid in taxes back might not work out and maybe your suggestion more of kind of an even number might work and maybe some other members have some different suggestions so i'll leave it as is if everyone's okay with that i'll second it thanks darcy and any further discussion rosie well, any I other comments to make 
I'll just I'll I'll just bring this up, um, and um, it's for discussion purposes. But what about um, reimbursing interest? I mean, this is probably going to take another year and a half or or two years, and so I'm I'm wondering um, if we think about um, fairness, should we consider um, reimbursing them in addition to a, a reasonable um, amount of interest for for uh, this uh, time time frame? I, it, no, I don't think it's a, no, there's a and Tom. I let Tom comment. I don't think there's a precedent for interest, but Tom, if you think that, if you think there is, then uh, let us hear it. And we can debate that. Hmm. Um, it's well, anytime you're doing a special act, it's really you really have kind of uh, carte blanche to decide what you want to do. So, you know, typically, I mean, if, if it was an appellate tax board situation and somebody filed an appeal at the appellate tax board and a tax was determined to be excessive, then um, in most instances, when you settle an appellate tax board case, it is without the payment of any interest. If you go through the full hearing process at the appellate tax board, then by statute, the appellate tax board will award interest on that award, similar to what would happen in a superior court case. So, but in most instances, when you're resolving a matter through a settlement process, such as kind of what we're doing here, typically it does not involve the payment of interest. I mean, it, Rosie, my comment to that is that although I agree that there's sort of been payment they want to they want to repay, we were we were legally, per Tom's reference, able to charge taxes, and now we're paying taxes back out of a budget that was based on those taxes. So we're sort of it's a reverse interest because now we're paying tax out of free cash because our tax base was based on collecting that thirteen thousand dollars. So. Um, so it's, it's in my mind, it's not a bad compromise to say we'll give you back dollar for dollar, but not interest because we're not going to increase our tax rate to the rest of our community in order to well, pay this back. I, no, I, think, I think if we're not going to give them interest, they should get their money back in one lump sum so that they can have access to it. Just remember that uh, the town receives a pilot. Payment in lieu of taxes just for Hamilton is about $145,000 a year. To pick up the trash is about the only service that is provided. And, uh, and I would maintain that the uh, way in which extra monies were secured, the only monies that should ever come from the park are through the pilot. Mm. The idea that you take uh, 910 classified land and presto gizmo turn it into 1010 uh, so that you have the authority and power to tax, which is exactly what happened in this particular case. I'm just asking that the right thing be done. Yeah, and, and I so, think Peter, I agree with. You. I think I agree with. You. I think we're trying to do the right thing, but I think that our tax rate was based on the math of this tax is being collected. It wasn't based on anything else. So now, now we're giving back money based on a tax rate, and without having to overburden the rest of our community, that we will give back on a staggered approach. And once again, it doesn't have to be staggered. We're going to vote on it. I guess it sounds like Sean says maybe, maybe next week, but um. But I think we agree that we're going to repay the taxes, and whether it's all at once or staggered approach, we will think about and look at Tom's language that he comes up with next week. But I okay, think the we, win we here just, is just that we just yeah. remember we receive yeah. we receive those monies from the state. I think yeah. uh, twice know, or that's, three that's, times that's a year, that, right? But, but we receive that, Peter, right, whether Kevin's separate, in the house separate. or not. Yeah, yeah. It's it's yeah, not that's, that's that's to me is house. it doesn't that's, that's different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's. Jamie, it's, you had to say something. Different you were going to say here. something. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so I, 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 I don't know that as much as many of you, um, though. Um, I feel like I'm getting kind of the, the point of it after this, and 
I am I'm keeping in mind to hear more, but I'm inclined to vote nay, um, even to have it on the warrant, but certainly as far as recommending it. Again, that's my inclination right now, um, because I think it sets a very bad precedent. There is a legal process for somebody to apply to abate their taxes. They didn't do it in a timely fashion. So if we do the, so, and that, and I'm not, I'm not even acknowledging that they were necessarily wrongfully assessed at the time, but for the sake of argument, I'll give that to you. There was a process for them to get it abated and they didn't follow it. And so everybody else in this town, and by the way, it happens to lots of people. Um, I don't know. This town has to apply for an abatement and that's how their taxes abated and they get told, you know, we're sorry, you can't have it abated because you missed the deadline. I, I think it's an ethical and moral issue. I really do. I don't think it's a financial issue. I think we need to do the right thing. We should just get it over with and move on. I agree that one way, yeah, but, but so dark, but we should do but, it but, uh, but without Darcy, a I, whole I, lot of discussion. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Darcy, I agree with you. We should we should resolve it, but it, but in terms of ethical, moral, per our town council, who we rely on, in our three town council over the last four years, we've determined we were legally allowed to charge taxes. We well, spent you know two to say. three years negotiating, but we spent two to three years, Darcy, negotiating a special act, and we gave the Kaminsky's the opportunity to write the special act. And nowhere in that time frame did they ask for a tax abatement until the special act was approved. So that was that's sort of the unfortunate thing that happened is that if it was in the original special act, it would have all happened at once. And this to me feels unfortunate. And once again, now while I'm in favor of this and I'm going to support it, mm -hmm. I, I wish, and I'd ask that the committee would have asked for this the first time around. So we wouldn't have to waste, I don't say waste, but it's a lot of time we're spending a lot of effort. And, and mm -hmm. we would, we did this three years ago and it's just unfortunate they didn't do it the first time around, but I'm going to support it, but I'm not going to support anything more than I'm suggesting, which is a, which is, no, which is no interest three-year staggered payment, and I will look for Tom to write the, um, the home rule petition. Um, and I'll go around the room one more time before we move on. And Peter, thank you for bringing to our attention. I think it's important that we take care of our citizens, our community, and, um, and I think it's a little compromise that needs to be made by all sides because of the time frame that went on here and the effort that we've all done to make this right. So Darcy, I know I hear your last comment was that we, that we resolve this thing as quickly as possible. Anything else you want to add before uh, for Tom to take into account when he writes the... Uh, Home rule petition. Okay, uh, Darcy, anything, uh, Rosie, anything else for uh, thoughts for uh, Tom before he writes the uh, petition? Uh, the home rule that we can view, we can vote on next time. No, no, I I agree with with the premise, and um, I definitely support it. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamie, you had your thoughts. Anything else to add? Oh. And uh, Sean. No, just point of clarification. We are about to vote on a placeholder, correct? Is that where we kind of left <laughs> off? Okay, yeah. just making making sure motion. we've been <laughs> around the block a few times here. So, okay, sorry. sorry gonna, no no sorry, more comments for me. Okay, so uh, we'll go roll call vote. Uh, Sean Farrell. Um, I almost said nay. Uh, Darcy. Darcy Dale. I. Uh, Rosie. Rosie Kennedy. I. Uh, Jamie. Jamie Knudsen, nay. And William Olson, aye. So it's a four to one vote. And uh, Tom, do you have any more questions for us before you write it? And I would like, Joe, I'd like to vote on it in our, at our next meeting if possible. Uh, the only question I have is specifically, do you want me to include language in there for a three-year payout without interest, <laughs> or do you want to include something different? Uh, the motion was three-year. Well, the motion was not was not specific to that. So um, couldn't so hurt sure. to look at it. <laughs> right. So I, when, I, when I draft up the warrant article, typically when we do a warrant article for a special act, it will include the actual language of the special act in the article. So right. in this okay. case, uh, I can, you know, the board doesn't necessarily have to vote on it tonight. You can vote on it at your next meeting when you approve the warrant. I, I think, I think, I think, Tom, I think, Tom, I think, Tom, for you, I think, Tom, for you, it's very simple. You put a line there that says that we will repay $13,000 at once or $13,000 over three years. I think it's a one liner in the, in the special, in the homework. So, so give us a, give us a, uh, 
a Mad Lib fill in the blank and we will address it. But the rest of the language should be um, should be addressed. Right. OK, thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I may, okay. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I'll, I, I'd uh, like the opportunity to speak with the CFO and see if we can try to work this out as quickly as possible and uh, uh, allow that to inform the uh, allow that to inform the language in the special article a little bit. OK, I think that makes That's sense. Good. And Peter, thank you again for uh, bringing this to our attention and helping to resolve it. And we hear you loud and clear, and we will work to uh, get this resolved. Thank you for your time and your interest. Appreciate it. Thanks, Peter. All right, next item on the agenda well, is- Well, can, can, we, oh, can we just make sure it's that the vote, you're- you're... The vote that closed the warrant, yeah. Well, yeah, you wanna make sure that you get that added now. And so I actually had that in there because I anticipated this. This is CPC <laughs> funding request, not none at this time, but we'll just change that to the placeholder item. And then these are the other three articles that are left on the, uh, on the uh, warrant at this time. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, do you have any questions about those? No, it, I, I guess I should, I say no, and then I'm going to ask you a question <laughs> um, on the cost for the special election. Um, Corinne and the state are working on getting some kind of number. Is that correct? They, um, they kind of more or less, Corinne was able to estimate based on past elections. Um, she came in at um, a little higher than this. And then based on uh, renewed numbers from the state, the state buys the ballots, et cetera. Uh, the estimated $14,000 would be the total Um expense for both the preliminary and the uh, uh, general election, general special election, so. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, I'll make, unless anybody's got any other discussion, I'll make a motion to close the um, the warrant for uh, 10 21 STL. Second. Second. Ah. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, Darcy, yeah. any other comments? I just, I just have um, a quick question. Um, just briefly, could you refresh my memory? for number one, amending the fiscal year 22 budget appropriation. Is that, I, um, I, I don't, it slipped my memory what, <laughs> what that includes. Is that oh, right? You, you, just, you just want me to embarrass myself. Uh, we, had a, <laughs> we had an issue at town meeting where when we adopted the budget, it included funding for the separate articles that were also approved subsequently. So what we in essence accidentally- We um, charge ourselves twice. We charge ourselves think? twice for about $600,000 okay. $600, or so. So we need to amend the general warrant article item so that it reflects the right amount so that when they all roll up together, we're, we're, we're actually appropriating the right amount of money. So. Okay, that's right. I'd forgotten. Thank you. Uh, so I sheepishly admit that not having a finance director at that time hurt me. Um, I, prop I apologize. Um, um, that's it. That's all I have on that. One, Darcy one last James. question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Peter. What happens to the recordings? This is a recorded session, and I'm okay. presuming that the discussion concerning the uh, uh, composition, the creation of the uh, placeholder, uh, will also be recorded. It's important that council have access to uh, uh, this uh, in his absence because uh, in some ways uh, uh, um, council hasn't been present while we, we, we talk about a piece of property, we're actually talking about uh, a person. Right, it's, it's all public record and it's accessible through, I believe, YouTube and the HWCAM website. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so I had a second to close the warrant. We had future dis uh, further discussion from Rosie. Does Darcy or Sean or Jamie have uh, further discussion? No, I'm set. Oh. Uh, Tom, Tom or Joe, any other discussion that we need to have? Um, so I, on the original list, there was a CPC funding request, but there will not be any CPC funding requests. Is that correct? No, that's no, correct. Not, that's not correct. until spring. Okay, that's correct. Um, I already drafted the article to rename the board of selectmen to the select board. Two articles for that. Um, my only comment on that was um, one of the articles is to amend the general bylaws, and the second article is to amend the zoning bylaw. So, as you may recall, zoning bylaw amendments have to go through the process that's set forth in General Laws Chapter 40A, Section 5. Public so, that's, that requires a planning board hearing. 
Joe, if you can mute real quick. Sorry, Joe. Um, so, <laughs> um, First day of school, a lot of excitement. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to make sure that that article um, th gets referred to the planning board for consideration and that the planning board uh, has a public hearing and has a recommendation for town meeting so that the article can be acted upon. Who's our, who's our planning board liaison? I am. So I, I can I can confirm the planning board uh, planning director is already planning for a hearing later this month on this article. So perfect. Okay, great. Um, and the uh, and in terms of the costs for the special election, is that going to be some, a standalone item, or is that something? Or are we just going to amend the uh, town clerk's budget to increase it by fourteen thousand dollars in in order to um, account for this special election? I think it'll be a standalone item so that people know what it's for. Otherwise, we handle it in the, in the article number one, but then that would be confusing to people. So, yeah. Okay. And then um, article, I'll just need to get the numbers from you, Joe, on article one. Yep. That's, That's it. it. I have, uh, no further questions there's, from me. And there's a good planning board meeting tonight on the Tobacco Woods project. So, when we're done with this meeting, you should all tune into that. So, all right, um, Joe, anything else we need to discuss on the uh, closing the town warrant? Not on the warrant itself, but since we're talking about town meeting, once you've voted, if we could have a couple of minutes to discuss with the board and the, uh, and the moderator, um, whether we want to continue to plan to do this indoors at the high school auditorium or outdoors. So um, I know that the moderator probably has an interest in and would like to say something about that. So we, gotta, we, we have a motion to close the warrant. Do we do that yet? Sorry. Yep, we did it. Yeah, we did. Okay. So we're all good. Waiting in the vote. Okay. All right. So. So let's talk about the town meeting. Um, well, let's let's, let's vote on the warrant closing first, and then we can. I thought we did. Did we? Oh, we didn't. Vote. No, we didn't. We didn't vote to close it. I made the we, motion. We didn't vote. That's Sorry, right. that's right. Yeah, Sorry, I seconded that's... it. Right. Yeah, you so seconded it. Vote. We so are. I'll, I'll call the vote on so, it. So, Mr. Chair, if you could. So we have a motion to close the town warrant based mm -hmm. on the article we just saw. We have mm -hmm. a motion and a second, and we're going to start with Sean Farrell. Sean Farrell, aye. Uh, Darcy. Darcy Dale, aye. Uh, Rosie Kennedy. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Jamie Newton. Jamie Knudsen, aye. And William Olson, aye. All right, so Joe, we'll give you the floor here to talk about the town meeting format. Sure. Uh, so we have we have uh, got a designated space to do it if we want to do it indoors at the high school auditorium. Uh, case counts and COVID are, are surging a little bit here in town. We have the seven cases right now this week. Um, there is some some belief that the, the numbers will start to come down sometime in October, but I don't know that, that there's really projectable and if we can really rely on that. I uh, did do a procurement process to identify a vendor to do the tent. Uh, we did a solicitation for quotes. We got one quote back. Um, it's about the same as we've been spending, about $45,000, including all the media, all the electronics and the making sure everybody can see in the floor so that everybody can get on there safely. Um, uh, we can still use CARES Act money through the end of October, so it wouldn't affect the town budget. I have that option, uh, but we would likely have to do it at Patton Park, not at the high school, because there is uh, because the high school is, is hosting a football game that that weekend. So we wouldn't be able to put the tent up beforehand and take it down afterwards. So, um, so Joe, just, we have not done a event at Patton Park previously, which kind of affects our learning curve. What are the <laughs> risks of having it at Patton Park? Um, you know, I, I talked to, about it briefly with the, with my security, with the public safety team. Um, Russ and Ray think that they can put together a, a good safety plan, uh, public safety plan. I, I, I have faith in them that they can do that. Um, in some ways, uh, the parking would actually be easier. I think we have for a special town meeting of this size with this number of articles, I think our biggest problem is going to be making sure we get a quorum. And right. uh, I think we have enough parking at the site that we'd probably be able to make it easier for people to get there and park close to the tent. Um our thought was to maybe put the tent probably between the two little league fields because there's a power source right near there that would be able to power everything. And the, uh, of course, the restrooms are there, so we wouldn't need to rent port johns So some of those things would work in our favor, actually. Um, actually, they've been thinking about it and talking about it with one, and they really feel their outdoor town meetings were uh, benefited by being at Pingree Park because it's in the middle of things and people could see it and people came. Um, you know, I'm not sure about that, but 
hey, I'll, I'll bite. Maybe it'll, it'll help us uh, drive drive numbers a little bit. I have also spoken to Sean Timmons about making sure that we reschedule anything that is planned for that Saturday, uh, i.e. flag football or whatever, fall football, baseball for the field so that the field would be available to us. Okay. Well, I mean, I think it's better if we just have the events going on and let people come into the town media and vote while they're watching their kids okay. play <laughs> sports. Yeah. But um, – what uh, when do we need to make a call, the decision by Joe? Do we need to make it in today or in two weeks or when when do you based on your vendors you've talked to? When do we need I mean, to make a decision by? I think that given that I asked five vendors for quotes and only one responded, uh, I think that I prefer to have an answer tonight. Um, I, it could probably limp another two weeks. We're fortunate in that the vendor that uh, responded has done uh, the pre three previous time meetings. So I think that if we asked him for a little grace period, he'd probably be fine with that. But um, the fact that the other vendors are too busy to to bid on the bid on our <laughs> on our request may suggest to me that we might want to lock them up. Yep. So, Joe, so if just, I can ask a question yes, going. to uh, as far as other town administrators or town managers that have an STM, are they doing inside or outside venues? Have you talked to many? And I hadn't lately, uh, you know, at the summertime when we, when we reserved the auditorium, most of us were thinking about going back inside and relieved to be doing so. Um, <laughs> This kind of has kind of come up in the last couple of days, but uh, last couple of weeks, I should say, last week or so. Um, I, I really haven't had the opportunity to talk to any of my peers right now about this. But uh, generally, I think that we've done a pretty good job making the best decision for Hamilton based on Hamilton circumstances throughout this whole ordeal. So I'm, I'm comfortable moving forward in that direction, if you'd like. Bill any has any recommendations from the Board of Health? Um, David Smith is concerned about the, I will say I've spoken to the chair at length. He's concerned about the way the case counts are rising and, and his attitude throughout this whole thing has generally been as much as we can do it outside, we should do it outside. Bill has, Bill Bowler has his hand raised just so you know. Um, yeah, I just on the um, moderators list serve, there've been, of course, this question has been asked and it's actually come up in the, in the, uh, context of representative town meetings and i would say um so far it's been about half and half um zoom you know because they can do representative town meetings can do zoom and i'd say of the ones you know the dozen or so probably half are doing zoom meetings um, and the others are doing some sort of a hybrid or outdoor meeting. So certainly the, the, the safer way is to do it outdoors. I guess I'd feel more, a little more comfortable. And, and Bill reminds me that Swamp Scott, where I live, is actually doing a, a Zoom uh, special town meeting again, uh, as they've been doing. So uh, they're a representative town meeting. They have the ability to go fully remote. They are again this year. So Gotcha. Yes, I, I was going to add that as well. Also, I'm, I'm actually covering Swampscott's town meeting, uh, which is representative, and that's on that's via Zoom on Monday. I have two other fall town meetings scheduled right now, in addition to Hamilton's and Swampscott's town meetings. Both of those, at least right now, are still scheduled for indoors, but they're in the later part of October. So, uh, that, I suppose that could change, but at least that's been my experience so far. I know in speaking to other attorneys at my firm, that uh, there are a number of different towns that are holding outdoor fall town meetings this year yeah. still. I guess as we have to think about what our numbers and what more people yes. are gonna be comfortable with, right? Yep. You know, I, I just I just was up at uh, UMass over the weekend visiting my sister and um, <clears throat> they have all their orientations going on and they're doing them indoors, but they've rented like these kind of giant HEPA air filter units to go outside the buildings that they're running through the building. I don't know if that would be an option for us, you know, if we did it indoors to, to rent some equipment like that, but just yeah. spitball in here, I guess. Um, I, I think we should have it outdoors. I think this Delta uh, variant, and there's also a mu variant that's uh, giving rise to some sickness. And um, I just know that these are, have lagging effects. So for example, all this activity around going back to school and the holiday and traveling, we're not gonna see that for three, four, five weeks. And I think it would be prudent for us to use a tent for that purpose. I, I, 
Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, Joe, do you think – so the CARES Act has $45,000 available to us. It won't affect our tax rate. Is that what you're telling us? Yeah. If it does, this is, then we should – No, that's exactly right. We've got a little over 100000 yep. about $150,000 yeah. left in the CARES money we were given. We have to spend it by the end of October anyway. So. Yeah. I, I say but we do it. I think we, I think, I think, I think, I think we do it because I don't think that it's responsible for us not to do it. So I think that um, if we have the money available to us, I think it's the right thing for us community to do and to have it outside. So, um, yeah, so we don't feel terrible if we make did a it motion, Joe, and something it. happened. Yeah. Yeah, I, I make yeah. a motion. So, so Joe, well, I, 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 yeah. I don't think I, don't I need a motion. I, I just want, I wanted to get the, I, I wanted to get yeah. the board's, uh, yeah. board in, in Mr. Bowler's opinion. Um, I mean, it's functionally, it's an operational decision. As long as you're all comfortable with it, I, I feel like we can, we can move it forward. Um, so, like I said, we've had a good team uh, doing these before. I will probably pull together a group if you want to designate somebody from the board selectmen to serve in that group, but somebody from the, uh, FinCom, somebody from the board selectmen, my safety team, Mr. Bowler, and, and the town clerk, we could probably just go through the nuts and bolts of it um, between now and beginning of October and we'll be all set to go. Yeah, Joe, I mean, I, I was on the, I was on it previously. So I, I would, I would uh, volunteer myself because I think because it's a new venue, there's some things probably we haven't thought about. So, um, so I, I, if anybody else wants to join, but I will, I will uh, volunteer myself, Joe, to help you uh, form that committee and make it successful. So let's, let's move it. Let's move ahead with it being outside. Okay. So uh, for just for purposes of the war, when I prepare the war, I'll include that the location of the special town meeting will be at Patton Park, is that correct, in a ta uh, an outdoor venue? Um, yes, sir. So That's the board correct. will ultimately vote on that at that time anyways when you approve the war. Okay, correct. All right, Joe, anything else? Uh, no, that's good for me. All right, next item on the agenda is the... Um, Vote to set special election dates to fill vacancy of state representative. I, I, so, think, I, uh, did, I, I think that I mis, misrepresented um, that. I, I, the special election dates were chosen by the Secretary of State, but you do need oh. to set the you do need to set the uh, the Ballot. location, the polling location. The location right. So, what's the mo who needs to make a motion? What's the motion need to be? Uh, did, I'm going to Joe. Can you say it again, and I'll make I'll make a motion uh, yeah, to establish the uh, the days and time of the election, the special election for this, the open state house, uh, state representative seat for fourth Essex district uh, to be, um, I think they're in your packets, but I believe uh, Darcy probably knows too. the uh, special meeting date. The, the uh, primary is November, Second of November. November 2nd. And then uh, the general election is November 30th yep. um, at the, at the, at the recreation center. And, so and moved. With risk of, yeah, I was going to say so moved <laughs> with risk of not remembering all that. So moved. So, so I'll second, second since Darcy made the motion. All right. So uh, any further discussion? Darcy, you allowed to, Darcy, are you allowed to vote in this thing or not? <laughs> well, that's a really good ethical question, isn't it? Uh, I don't think it matters. It's, I, it doesn't matter. At this well, point, there's, I don't no think it does. Right. there's no money involved. There's no so money involved. There's good. no money involved. So it shouldn't make a difference. All right. So uh, we'll do a roll call vote. We'll start with uh, Darcy. Darcy Dale, aye. Uh, Rosie. Rosie Kennedy, aye. Uh, Jamie Knutson. Jamie Knutson, aye. Sean Farrell. Sean Farrell, aye. And uh, William Olson, aye. And the last item on the agenda is to discuss our policy for serving alcohol on public property. So as we talked about previously, when we were talking about the Hamilton Wyndham Shop local one day alert licenses, we've over the past month, we've, um, I think in good news, we've had a lot of events at Patton um, State and we're now having to look at sort of what we serve alcohol at a private event on public property. And so we've looked at the fact we don't really have a good policy for that. So. We talked at our last meeting about writing a policy. So I did a, a draft policy based on sort of what I read between the ABC, the Mass General Law, and it, actually a policy I liked that was written for, I think, I believe, uh, Nantucket for public and private property in Nantucket. I sent it out to everybody today. Obviously, it was just sent out today. So that's where we're not going to vote today. We're just going to have a discussion today and have a discussion next time and maybe vote in from our third meeting from now. Let me just go through and sort of present to people what I saw, and then we can sort of um, talk about what the items are. So 
Um, so the guidelines for I'll call it event facility. So I think there's really three type of events. There's an event that is a for-profit event, which is sort of similar to what we're doing for the uh, shop local event, um, whether it's on private or public property, it's a for-profit event and it has very, very follow strict guidelines because the ABC manages and mandates the selling of alcohol. And so you, utilizing their guidelines makes a lot of sense and there's not really anything we can do about it. They also manage the nonprofit event, which is the charity event. What they don't really manage well is the not-for-profit event, which is a private event um, where it's either, you know, we're, we're, where it's not open to the public and beer and wine alcohol is, is, um, purchased by the event organizer and then given, um, to the people that attend the event. So what I try to do is combine it all into one policy. So it would be, once again, the idea of trying to be simple or things in one place. So it's a three page document and the items that I thought were in discussion were in red and I know Joe, I don't know if you know you have a copy of this, but I want maybe I can share this on my screen here. Hold on a second here. Let me try and share my screen. I just made you a co-host, so you should be able to share. So Everybody can see my uh, screen here. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's called it. You know, I call it draft guidelines for alcohol serving at event facilities. So the first. Bill, page... if you can zoom in for the the old people like me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. So this the first section really talks about it. Just quotes really master General law and the ABC, which basically says that um, you can't you know, apply for more, a total of more than 30 calendar days per year. You can't be issued a license if you're, you have an application pending um, and you can't serve alcohol at a facility already serving alcohol. It has to be at a facility that doesn't have a liquor license. Um, they have an interesting section here, which I think makes sense that it's a strictly private event, which is one thing that we talked about is that they actually issue a 12C license, a 12C catering license. So if you're having a private event on a non-public property, you rent a hall or a venue in town that doesn't serve alcohol and you hire a caterer with a 12C license, they pretty much are already regulated to be able to serve alcohol based on a 12C license. I think that makes sense. I don't know that we're going to have a lot of conditions of that, but I think once again, that our policy should be all, I think our problem right now is our policy wasn't all encompassing. So if we want to be all encompassing, we should address every issue that may possibly happen in town. So I have a section here on 12C catering license, which, which is on the AABC site, as well as the uh, Nantucket version I looked at, which basically says that as a caterer with a 12C license, you can serve at a private event. You don't need to have a special license. You can serve for five hours. Um, you can be on, um, not on public property. You can be on private property. And you have to purchase alcohol from a licensed Massachusetts wholesaler. And, um, and so that's the first section. It defines in a private event that I think we had a hard time discussing last time what it meant to have a private event. It's a private event, not for profit, for profit. We're going to call it a private event. A private event is not open to the public. It, 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 and it's, it's really four, four things that I thought. I th thought it was it, as a host. Some of these are, are defined by other people. But as a host, um, it's it's a it's invited guests only. It's not public advertised. It's not on town owned land because once again, a private event on town owned land. I think we still should regulate because it's on town owned land. So if you want to rent a hall somewhere in town and have and get a one day local license, that's the process for 12C. But if you want to be on town owned land, I think that we need to be more stringent than just a 12C license. And, and Rosie, I know you did some research on this too, but did you do research on the 12C license? Do you, do you agree that the 12C license should not apply to town owned land? You know, I, I think Bill, um, yeah, I, I, I like your approach here. I think one of the things that's, that's really confusing and was very confusing in the liquor license that we were discussing two weeks ago is and I think Tom is still on this uh, call. Who 
so so the issue is a, a 12 seat caterers license versus um, um, a, a one day permit. And I think we all agree that there needs to be some strict regulation, especially on town owned property. So my question is, in the event that it is a private event, um, a host is hosting, say, a, a, a pre-wedding party or is hosting a graduation party, who applies for the license? And then from, from some of the, um, this might be a little bit off topic, but it's, it, it's an interesting topic at, at any rate, who is granted the license? And, and in some of the um, special permit applications I read, it's actually the poorer who's granted the license. So, so it, it becomes a little confusing. So maybe Tom can help to, to clarify that um, at, at, at some point during this discussion. I think, I think that's a good point. I, and, I, and Rosie, I even called the AABC because I did, there's nowhere it says anywhere what that answer is with the question you just asked. It doesn't, right. it, basically, it basically, it's up to us. It's up to the selectmen or the, or the right. it's up to the town to decide Permitting that authority. answer. Mm -hmm. Yes. That right. So, so Tom, I know you opined on this previously, but that's right. a great question. What is your, uh, what's the direction so, you want to give us for that? So I think it's, it varies, frankly, unfortunately, there's no uh, black and white answer on that type mm -hmm. of a question. So sometimes it will be the caterer, for example, or who's ever actually uh, serving the alcohol right. uh, will be the Per the entity that applies for the one day license. Right. Uh, sometimes it's the host of the event, where the individual who's essentially hosting it, or if it's a company or a, um, a nonprofit or, or whatever it may be that's actually mm -hmm. hosting the event, there'll usually be somebody at who's employed by that entity who will apply for the license. So um, it, it really varies. I don't think that there's, and, and ultimately it's, these these types of one day licenses are not any kind of a special one day license is not governed by the ABCC, so they have no oversight or jurisdiction over those types of licenses. So ultimately, it does come down to a decision by the board. Yeah. So okay, so that's the, that's helpful. So it, it allows us to have um, more or less oversight depending on what we think is appropriate. And so I, I think about the situation of, um, and, and I think I said this last week and, and it concerned me greatly that it's, it's pretty easy when you have um, a nonprofit putting on a, um, an event or, or, or a not-for-profit or a for-profit. That Those are the easy questions, right? But then when you come down to a private individual who wants to have a party say on town owned land, uh, town owned property at the uh, Patton Estate. So how do, how do we decide? Um, so what if it's, and I think I'd said this, the analogy of a 22 year old who's graduating from college and wants to have his graduation party there and he wants to be the host. And so, and so there's an enormous amount of risk there. So I think the blanket policy should be that there always needs to be somebody um, responsible for for the um, insurance costs for um, for for liability mitigation. And I think um, and I will be sharing this with you, Bill. One of the um, very um, I don't remember. I looked at several uh, towns um, one day liquor policy, and there was one town in particular that really spelled out the, the requirements that the entity who's going to be granted the license, who's going to be pouring the liquor has the responsibility to make sure that uh, minors are not near where the liquor is sold, that somebody has the um, affirmative responsibility to make sure that somebody is not falling down drunk as they're coming up to the bar looking for another drink. And so, so, so I think first and foremost, the important thing is that we make the clear policy um, based on good sense, um, liability mitigation and responsibility to the town that in no circumstances would a private host ever be able to obtain any sort of a, a, a permit or license to uh, dispense liquor at, 
at his event. Uh, I think on town owned property, that should absolutely be the floor of what we require. And I think, Bill, your your policy here definitely starts to uh, address that. Yeah, I, I, I was looking for no. I, I did I did say that somewhere in here. Rosen, we can go review that. But Tom, what were you going to comment on? Yeah. So uh, no, the, uh, I was just my comment was just going to be that the issue that I looked at a couple of weeks back <laughs> had to do with an event that was being held at the uh, Patton Homestead, okay. mm -hmm. and technically, and the question really came up, as I understood it, was whether or not a one-day license was required for that particular event where there was no caterer. It was kind of a, you know, I guess potluck type of thing where the, where the host was hosting a, uh, I think it was like a pre-wedding right. party with some of his relative friends and relatives that were going to be there. And he was going to provide food, you know, trays of food, as well as bring in kind of coolers of, of beer, wine and champagne or whatever it may be for, for his guests. So that type of event really is, there's no alcohol service in the sense that yeah. um, for, for service to take place, there's, you know, there's really a sale um, and that can either be, somebody walks up to a bar or, or to a server and hands them cash credit or, or whatever it may be and pays for a drink, or um, you could buy a ticket to attend an event and then it would be you know, kind of an open bar or there's some other, um, there's, there's some other exchange of, of money essentially for the alcohol, uh, in, which, in which case it would constitute service that would require a license. But the event, at least as how as I understood it, was more akin to somebody having a cookout in their backyard um, yeah. that just happened to be held on town property. But that's um, the problem, that's right? The problem. Well, that is and, a problem. And it's a problem for, for a couple of reasons. One, obviously the town owns the property, so you oh. want to have some control over what takes place in the property. But also the town has specifically has a bylaw that mm -hmm prohibits the um, consumption and uh, open containers of alcohol in a public place, which includes not just a public way, but also includes any town public property as yeah. well. So uh, without Board of Selectmen approval. So, um, so it definitely makes sense to adopt a policy mm -hmm. as it relates to service of alcohol or any kind of possession of alcohol on, on town property. Yeah. I, I think the um, main thing is we don't want to rent this place out and have, have it be a BYOB party house. Free for all. Right. That's exactly. Because that's what it would be. You bring your cool, bring what you want to drink and party all. I mean, it, we can't, we can't do that because people will do that. If that's allowed, they will do it. And so somebody right. else. Right. And that's what I was suggesting. I think it makes sense to have uh, for the board to adopt a policy as it relates to service of uh, or of any kind of consumption of alcohol, not even necessarily ser service. Right. I um, mean, that's, much that's control right. over because there's a license associated with right. that. That's, for so just it's, possession so it's, or, or, or having alcohol um, and consuming alcohol on town property it makes sense to adopt a policy to address yeah. that issue. All right, so, so, I, had, so I, had, I had a line here in, in the policy, so we can get back to specific policy, but and maybe it needs to be amended. I, I said all individuals who are served, sell, deliver, or dispense alcohol beverages for any, for any permanent event in the town of Hamilton, whether it's private, public, nonprofit, for-profit, mm -hmm. must have current proof of completion within the last three years of an appropriate mass alcohol beverage tips. Service must also have certification on their person during the event. All servers must work for an independent, licensed, and insured service company or caterer. For private events, cater cannot be a relative of the party. So hosting the event. So I try to encompass everything that we had talked about as a group, but this was more the individuals who serve. I think it's individuals who serve as well as apply for permitting, right? So it's not just the servers, it's also the it's also the permitting body. So but I try to capture everything that Rosie and Darcy and Sean and Jamie had talked about, but sort of it's it's the um you know, it's the tips, it's the independent license insured cater, and they cannot be a relative of the party hosting the event. You know, um, just just a thought here, we could just make a blanket policy that uh, when anybody engages um, town owned property to make it a requirement that they that they hire um, a, a party planner or, or somebody who has 
a, a license and, and the insurance because I mean, uh, I think in the case of what happened um, a, a few weeks ago, there there wasn't a special alcohol liability. I mean, that was the first issue that we had to resolve, right? There there wasn't alcohol liability. And just because somebody has a property yeah, damage but, liability. Right, but caters don't have, every cater, Rosie, and I, I agree with you, but every cater doesn't have alcohol liability. And right. the, then they can't. Yeah. Play, then they and, can't play in our house. <laughs> well, that's, but, that's, that's, but that's but that's not a requirement. I mean, that's not a blanket requirement, though. That's sort of a. And I'm not sure. And I'm once again I'm not an insurance expert for. But yeah. I, what I saw was a lot of caterers don't carry that. So there's a reason why they obviously they don't because it's not required at a lot of places. So, you know, right. they have liability. They have li They have general liability. They don't have right. alcohol. So I think we would need a insurance sort of actually to comment on what the difference is and what our risk is by having one, not the other. And Tom, I don't know, I don't know if you have the knowledge to comment on one versus the other, but most of the requirements I saw were for general liability, not for alcohol liability. Yeah, I, I would defer to an insurance expert on yeah. that as to yeah, the yeah. differences between the two types yeah. of coverage. Yeah. You have one, the, you, so I, I would, yeah, because I, because I didn't see a lot, I, while, while I, I also think it's a good idea, I didn't see it anywhere. I couldn't find an example of it. So I was wondering why that was. So mm -hmm. I think that we need to ask that question before, because once again, we don't want to make requirements that nobody else in the state has and then make our places not rentable. So well, I want to, well, I think, yeah, yeah. One thought I, that I, I had is, and, and I don't know whether it's a requirement, but if, if, if it could very well be a requirement um, that the ABCC has in place in order to get a caterer's license, they perhaps have to have alcohol liability coverage, but I don't know whether that's a true or yeah, not. I, think, I just I think thought that they may require something like that. So don't we have, um, we can't, we have sort of a, um, a template here. The community house um, has, uh, they rent out their property and they require that people use their caterer. Yep. So, I mean, obviously we, we would need to ask them the question, what kind of liability insurance do they have? But, but I think this is important enough to really investigate it more. We certainly have raised a lot of questions and there's more information, Bill, that you have. Um, but, but I do think that this, this is a very individualized policy. If this is something that we wanna do to, to think about um, making the homestead more user-friendly to maybe smaller parties, since we only have capacity for smaller parties, we do need to be careful because each time it does put the town at risk if we're not careful about uh, making sure the appropriate and adequate liability insurance is in place. So Rosie, if you can reach out to um, Community House and figure to out- To Melissa, what, yeah, I'll do that. See what they're, and then Joe, if you can find out what, our, what the difference is between having general liability at, at a million bucks versus Alcohol liability, what that risk is, that would be helpful. I could, I could talk to Kevin Risk. I, I do think that Tom might be onto something, though, as far as, and even Rosie, um, if I could suggest that uh, the idea that um, once you establish a policy, um, complete with the, the insurance limits and things like that, we could um, we can put out an RFP and basically, or an RFQ, rather, I should say, and ask uh, caterers to respond. And those that respond and, are, are, and meet the terms of our policy would be able to be um, considered as preferred caterers at the site. And we could just tell people that want to rent and serve and have an event that has alcohol service. So you have to work with one of these caterers in order to be at the site, because if you don't, then we can't be sure that you're going to meet our policy requirements. Right. And that simplifies everything greatly and puts everybody on the same, on the same. Right, kind of right. And, and Bill, as I look, um, because I know you had, um, um, honed in on the on the Nantucket liquor license uh, I looked at at several others and and we could also I mean I, I think it really behooves us to make a very careful policy and I think it may have been um, actually the town of uh, the the city of Gardner has a very um, comprehensive rules for special one day liquor license and I thought those were were, were very good and we could perhaps engage um, caterers or whatever entity would be would be in charge um, to um, be able to abide by these rules, which would make it as safe as possible. So that's something that I would definitely 
endorse mm-hmm. having preferred caterers and maybe yes. even, you know, that one has to um, choose a caterer from, from this list. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that's, uh, if we had a list, a short list of, you know, three or mm-hmm. four or five caterers, that'd be good. Yep. Um, the other things on the, um, on the policy were, you know, a four, or eight and a half by 11 sketch of exact locations. I think that's probably not a bad idea. Just so it, it makes them think about what their events going to look like. So, you know, I don't think we're going to be adamant that it's to scale, but at least it tells mm-hmm. us where sort of the bar is going to be and how it's going to be managed. And it lets the people who are playing the party think about the management of it. Um, so I left that, I left it on there as a location, just so they can give us a sketch. Like, and I think that, you know, we got the same thing from shop local. They kind of show us where the bars were going to be. So it kind of made sense to look at that on a plan. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. My, my only, my only thing is, you know, and, and I think we started reference a little bit earlier indoor uh, indoors were, were subject to 49 person limits because of just the, the capacity of the building, what we can do with the building in its current condition. But we, we have done some outdoor um, events there and, those might be a little bit different. So uh, the, the sketch may not, may show you like from within the tent where the alcohol service would be versus like um, rather than on the foot plan of the building, just just making sure that that's acceptable for you all um, because we need to be clear what we're asking them to give us. You know, the, if it's an outdoor event, the footprint's a much bigger area. I think we want right. to be clear right. about we how just we want to specify the alcohol serving area and not the whole, like you said, the whole venue. Right. <laughs> Now, I think right. I think it's good to put limits on it and to manage those limits. Um, hours and duration was something that I, but I added to it because it wasn't on the previous application, and maybe Rosie had seen another one she looked at. But I think ours and the ABC allows it to be for five mm-hmm. hours. Um, and it allows it to be between the hours of eight a.m. and two a.m. I'm not sure if you want it. That's that's, that's sort of late. a wide range. It's just sort of. Uh. A, Yes, but that's what it says. So the question is, do we want to yeah. change that? Just so you know, the, be, for you know Pat, so I, the policy would be for any public land in town, but specifically to the Patton Homestead, we've already adopted a, a, a kind of management policy that property won't be rented, uh, parties won't be allowed to um, continue operation there outdoors beyond 9 p.m. Oh, indoors, they might go till 10 p.m., okay. but outdoors, they yeah. wouldn't be able to go beyond 9 p.m. because of the neighbors. So that's, good. Uh, that's an internal management policy that's already, okay. but just right. to make sure right. that we're playing nice with our right. neighbors. I, so, I would so say, yeah, I would, I would say like 10 o'clock for indoors, nine o'clock for outdoors kind of is a right. general yeah. rule. I can, so I, can, I think I can one of the other change. issues with the Patton Homestead is having driven that road for a thousand years. I mean, that's a pretty treacherous road. And I don't think I'd want to see somebody driving down that road. At, at 2 a.m. when you're probably tired, if if not anything else, just being tired alone raises the, the hazard. So so I do like a much a much earlier hour. I think we're trying to we're trying to market that okay, that so. facility as, as kind of very uh, homey and comfortable, very um, intimate setting. It's not meant for very large parties. Outdoors, you know, right. you could do a tent. You could probably do 100 people, but 125 people but that's really the extent of what we're ever going to be able to do out that and a lot of things will be much smaller than that so um i, I agree that 10 p.m is definitely late enough for anything out 10 9 p.m outdoors 10 p.m indoors definitely late enough for anything out there okay uh inspection it basically says your subject inspection of the hamilton police local licensing authority alcohol aabc so uh so that was that part of it and then um the rest of Would you be willing was... to draft more policies when we have them coming up? And this is this is pretty thorough. <laughs> so anyway, so I'll, I'll clean this up, send out to everybody, and we'll talk about it in two weeks. Yeah, that's good. That's that's a that's a really good start, Bill. <laughs> and uh, and, and <laughs> Rosie, if you want to send get the hooga horn, Rosie, if you want to. Send... <laughs> what was that? What, Rosie, what if you I... want to send. Rosie, if you want to send. Sorry, Rose, if you could send me any of the ones you saw from, um, I think oh, you yeah. sent someone from Gardner. Yeah, I have, I have to me, that'd be good. Times that, that and we, have some, we have some public on here. I don't know if anybody on the, in the, on the, uh, any other people here have, are on the call to talk about this, but I, I will open up for any comment that people may have on this policy before we move on. And by moving on, okay. I hope you mean we will adjourn. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I'm looking for Darcy to uh, Darcy to make a, a motion. May I make a motion to adjourn? 
And I'll second that. <laughs> Yay. Any further discussion? It was a good meeting. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. It was a good meeting. It was a great, it was a great meeting. Getting a little it's punchy. A great meeting. Here, but... well, all right, so we'll see you guys later. <laughs> right? well, we didn't call 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 Darcy. Okay. Darcy. Oh, Darcy Dale. Hi, Darcy Dale. Now I. you can go. <laughs> Rosie. I Rosie wait. Kennedy. I. Jamie Knutson. Jamie Knutson. I. Uh, Jamie Farrell. Sean Farrell. I'll take a. Jamie Farrell. <laughs> Sean Farrell. See it's late. That's it's how, late. Sean Farrell. I am. John Farrell and William Olson. I thank and you, Steve everybody. Olson. Thank you, uh, Joe. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you, Tom. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. Sorry, Thanks, Don. Sorry, Thanks, Sean. Don.